Welcome back to Dialogue Choices Podcast. I, I was I always have the instinct to start these episodes by being like, it's episode... But then I have that instinct after I've already hit started, so I don't have the tab open. He never knows. He it's never episode knows. 94. We still haven't hit 100. We should have hit 100 uh, six <gasps> months ago, but we have bad attendance. <laughs> we'll hit 100. We can do that. Yeah. And yeah, we'll this die. year, I hope. God. We we're at a, a pace of a, a podcast per month, so I think I, we're we're good. I think this is the longest pod running podcast we've ever done. Yes, it is. Yes. Granted, yes, what the fuck is so a good. podcast? It, the number just keeps starting over periodically, maybe tied to like a casting change or something. But like, <laughs> this is like supposedly like our seventh podcast or something, and the <laughs> the functional difference is very low. The original Sadcast well, this... had four episodes for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long running one. Back in the day, the we didn't didn't know what life would be. That's where like. we got quotes such as I survived the Chuck E. Cheese massacre because original original podcast was so far back that we were like reacting to how bad the original FNAF was. <laughs> Cause we played FNAF for ten minutes. We're like, this game fucking sucks. And now look at it. <laughs> I'm on the wrong side of history again and again. FNAF, Fortnite, just whenever I dunk on a new game that's stupid and bad, well, I am right. Let me guess. But also everyone <laughs> buys it. <laughs> Let me guess. You also didn't like Minecraft or Roblox. Uh, no, Minecraft Actually, great. I, I'm being, I, I instantly I'm being loved unfair, Minecraft, yeah. but Roblox, I'm being unfair. Yeah. Roblox uh, did always look like a garbage game for tiny babies. And mm -hmm. it still does. What... It still looks like a horrible video yeah. game that people have only put up with because it was their only option as a child. I think it's because I... it's free, right? I have no yes. idea what Roblox looks like. I've never looked at I Roblox. I have seen streamers play it. Uh, Roblox, yeah. Roblox looks Roblox... like the Sim Copter, the game where you put out fires in a uh... Sim City with like Windows 95 Lego graphics of a literal Lego game. Lego Copter, that's what I meant. The fucking ancient lego video games like it looks worse than lego like le it looks like lego character designs but it looks like somebody who just learned blender this week made all the characters like people walk around yeah. as like a billboard shaped rectangle man where the where the far left and right parts of the billboard wobble slightly and that's the arms supposedly like it is the cheapest <laughs> most garbage graphics you could possibly imagine and the only possible excuse that anybody has ever put up with it is that one it's free and two it relies entirely on a community of community's goodwill to make content for it to so that it actually has any content for anyone to care about no no it's worse than that actually it's not even the goodwill it's uh, like lower barrier get, to entry gary's mod people get paid for the 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 paid ver paid mods basically that for is the Roblox? thing is they made them they made a marketplace for people to monetize their mods and everything why do you, only you guys keep saying people children Yes. Their market, they have a market. Thing. They only get twenty five percent. Yes, can do, can do labor to sell to other children who, again, don't have money. <laughs> like, but yeah, the moment the moment anybody asks you to children. play, like, when are you going to play Roblox? You just know that they like they say Oomphy on the reg. Oomphy is <laughs> a thing I have never. Uh, <laughs> that, yes. that is, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Be happy. I, I posted I posted two pictures into the Discord chat of what kind of is the graphical limit here. Yeah. That is what you're expecting to look at. It is legitimately The terrifying just... thing to me about Roblox is just the fact that it was so obviously garbage, and I'm like, okay, whatever. It'll 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 die. And it'll it'll go like it's Neopets yeah. era ancient ass shit. And it's still here. And it's more popular. Yeah. Like it had a spike in the last few years, probably the pandemic or something, but like Holy mm -hmm. shit, it's so much more popular now to the point, like, I think it might, if it probably did almost die at some point, but like now it's like upsettingly I, popular for a completely different generation. You're like, oh no, why did Roblox who kept showing new people this? <laughs> Roblox is like basically Roblox did what Dreams was trying to do, which was I want to give people the option to, cre to create a never ending stream of content for each other, but I did it on a platform that everyone can access. Like it, it is really a smart idea. The problem is just you have to really put up with so much ugly jank. And the only people who are going to do that are fucking babies. Like people who I, don't have the money to have a better time are the people who are going to like Roblox. I can't believe Tommy Tallarico made a whole game to exploit kids. I can't believe well, well, that 
Tommy Tallarico invented himself. He didn't even exist until he invented himself. <laughs> his mother, his mom is very, very proud, so it's fine. When yeah. I was a kid, I played Ragnarok online private servers. I think that we should force kids to do that again. It I, will teach them I played a ever, thing. I, 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 I played I ever feels, once, It's like, very nice. Like, like when we were kids, we just got to play normal video games. We didn't have to play... <laughs> A weird I like, like, like I do not child, know. We didn't have to play weird child targeted freemium games that are designed to like condition you for the market. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna say that I don't know if I would call playing Korean MMOs on private servers a, a normal game experience. No, yeah. no but like, that, like that's, I, but, that's but I was I was shaking hands. I was like, shaking hands going... with Colonel for having played Diablo two and stuff like that. Like just yeah, sure. just, just playing a video game. Just play a regular video I, game you buy it once for twenty dollars and then you just go <laughs> it's not these weird nightmares that are conditioning you to become like this like endlessly looping like like microtransaction consumer and i, just, I don't like i don't like anything yeah. about this uh, express I'm, yourself I'm via saying, cosmetics we had a different hell where we learned what it was like to to just do forced labor by just grinding for 700 yeah. hours to get one level in hey, ragnarok and yeah. then like that's your life now yeah. excuse yeah. me yeah. do you know how many times i swam around the cobalt building in everquest to get my swimming up it took me <laughs> yeah. hours but i was level 100 swimming and i could swim with the best of them so my my entire summer being wasted no i learned to swim in a exactly. video game the only thing yeah, that hasn't changed is that none of these kids should be online in the first place because there's just you're they're interacting yeah. with a bunch of adults all the time. Yeah, I mean that's, yeah, that's the bigger yeah. that's the bigger concern yeah. is that Roblox isn't age gated. So you no. are in fact letting children interact with a lot of adults who again have a monetary incentive to exploit them for both labor and money. Yeah, like all the all <laughs> the games that Roblox grab is. children don't ever do the responsible thing of also cutting off communication methods. So yeah. They're never just like, I'm just being a child in an online avatar where nothing can get to me. It's always like me being 12 playing Diablo 2 and someone's just span like typing in all caps. But fucking is wrong. But fucking is wrong. It squeezes your dick off. <laughs> just like just <laughs> somebody, what? What I, just somebody like just, just I mean, screaming just about anal sex in at, I, at me because they're I on mean, my friends list and just directly at me. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening right now. And I'm like 12 we, or 13 years the, old. <laughs> like, can we get that guy on the podcast? I want to know his sources. I want I want updates. <laughs> I want I want to know how it's going for him. Yeah, yeah. How's his dick doing? Like, yeah, is he okay? I, <laughs> like, humble brag. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> back in back in my day, I couldn't have confidence like that. It's just, <laughs> it's just a formative memory of just like what the fuck is this guy? Is and this is what at? everyone's missing out Why on. Is this is the internet that you guys it? threw away. Imagine the internet you could have had if you didn't have Roblox. You could have had butt fuck yelling all the all in every video game. So this podcast but is no. now demon. <laughs> <laughs> As if it wouldn't have been anywhere anywhere else in the time code. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know how we got on Roblox. Uh, uh, good point. I don't know. The hot topic we gonna... I was thinking about yeah. was the fact that what halves we be uh, fighting the algo. Because uh, uh, being a YouTuber is bad. But being a Let's Player is like the <laughs> worst type of being a YouTuber. It's like being an animator in 2016 where... Just, uh, YouTube just decided you don't count anymore. Fuck you. We're turning off your part of the internet. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, viewership be declining. And uh, so I, I'm on a, I have an aging, decrepit, dying, horrible Let's Play channel. And uh, Toaster is trying oh. to break into the market, which is a choice. Uh, and it turns out Let's Plays just don't work. Like if you, if you want to... You want them to do like old style, like classic Let's Plays where you're like, here is my 50 part playthrough of this game where I play it through front to back while doing commentary. And there's no air horns or fart noises or boom mic drop meme noises or highlight reels or subtitles that are really big on the screen to highlight how funny I'm being the second high energy supercut stuff. Uh, no. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore on YouTube. The thing that all of us collectively did do to meet each other, like it's uh pretty much nobody is doing great with that format nowadays. Mm -hmm. So uh we're taking different approaches of just like what uh 
do in modern net. I'm just trying to like, as a half measure sort of thing, uh, because obviously I'm working on my, on my essay channel and trying to get that figured out, uh, and have just a different platform essentially and have, and like adapt that way, but then maybe have let's plays be my side thing that I'm still doing while at, while essays become like my job potentially. But in the meantime, I'm like, I'm trying to revamp my schedule. So I'm like, okay, let's try an approach where I upload one video per day because I've been uploading once upon a time. It was very successful that uh, my biggest mm -hmm. uh, period of climbing was eight videos per day. Like I can scroll I that. All the way up on my Google Calendar to the point where I was making eight videos per day, and uh, it's still there. <laughs> like it's so I could see exactly what games were being uploaded on what day because I was keeping track of it in my calendar, and it's all and it's all still there. And it's you, you have to hit the expand button to see more on each individual day of the month because all of them are too long of a, a list of things. But I don't know that, how now, you did that. Uh, it's all I did. First of all, yeah, I'm I know, I'm aware. I'm yeah. just saying, like that's wild. Like I, I couldn't. That's when you are. That that's when you are output. recording as a full time job and editing as a side gig. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I started doing that when I had a job, and that's what it. That's what. And whenever anyone's like, I want to be a YouTuber, I'm like, oh my fucking god, because like so many of the people that got break into getting YouTube as a living do so by uh, all kind of killing themselves for years, just being that's miserable, hard, and that's how you get in. Which is still better than a lot of jobs, admittedly, but damn, it is not mm -hmm. like, haha, I just, I get by on my charisma and I upload a 10 minute vlog that I record in one go and that's my day. <laughs> that's, you have to become a multimillionaire first, then you can start being lazy. Because if nothing else, you'll pay other people to do it. Mr. B, to all of his credit, does not sound lazy. He sounds like he is incurable. He sounds... Like he has the YouTuber disease and is incapable of it, not doing the thing I did years ago forever. And he's still doing it just now that he's empowered by millions of dollars and countless employees. He's kind of doing it to all of them, too. But he's just ju juggling 17 projects at once and he's going to die at 40. He reminds me of like a mm -hmm. CEO in the 80s, like either something unnatural is propping this man's uh, <laughs> uh, energy levels up or he's going to explode. He's got that tw he's got that mid twenties grind set, <laughs> With the, no. the, that that fucking no, shit no, no, where no. you're going to college and you're working and everything like that's just what happens to so many people nowadays. Like except now it's the YouTuber version where he's just like I gotta keep going, gotta keep moving, and it, that's like it's upsetting. It's upsetting to watch, and 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 half of my friends have been in it, and I've been in it, and it feels different when you're doing it, but it's not good for you. <laughs> like I feel I feel bad for him in ways, but anyway. Uh, I'm uh, I'm currently changing the schedule so that I upload one game per day, and I'm going to do that till all the current games kind of wrap up, and then as each one ends, instead of replacing it with a new game, I'm just going to air more of the remaining games until I can like wipe the slate game, uh, wipe wipe the slate clean by just kind of wrapping all those games up, and then I can convert to basically playing like one or two games at a time, and they'll get, like if it's one game, it'll be like eight hours of that game per week, so. A normal sized video game for sane people would be over every other week and then I could just keep doing another game every other week and that would be like an exciting eventful thing instead of what I've been doing lately which is that like fucking hope you like Tears of the Company, Baldur's Gate 3, Lethal Company, Password and Talos Principle Tears 2 the because company. Yeah. I was a little bit confused for a moment yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, that sounds like I, a they're next game. to each other they're next to each That's other like... on my screen but it's like I hope you like these five <laughs> games specifically because each of them has uh 50 to 100 episodes each so that's just all you're looking at for six months <laughs> like yeah, but uh, don't you upload one episode of those things every day no i upload oh, okay. i currently okay. upload three videos a day there's an 11 a.m hour long video a 12 p.m half an hour video and a 1 p.m multiplayer video so basically i have a schedule that's gotcha. two main okay. videos and then i'm just like with the multiplayer stuff we've been recording lately and just kind of spread that out over the week kind of haphazardly because i don't even know what the fuck we're gonna do every week uh so my normal schedule was at like at 11 a.m let's scroll down so sunday through saturday sunday through friday i'd go zelda lies of p talus principle zelda lies of p talus principle and then at 12 p.m. it'd be password, Baldur's Gate, password, Baldur's Gate, password, Baldur's Gate. And then Saturday is password and Baldur's Gate. Because <laughs> that's just how the math oh. worked out so that they all have the same duration. Is that 
those games have those games are half an hour long and so they air four times a week which does seven days in a week so they double up on saturday problem here is that our patreon game became Baldur's gate where it's it's incorrigible that's not the word it's 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 uh it's a uh, it's incomprehensible it's wrong to make that okay, game actually cut off consistently at 30 minutes because of the way that yeah. game is fucking paced you'll be like okay it's the middle of a conversation yeah. or it's the middle of a fight or something i can't end the episode yeah. here this would be unwatchable and then password is also like i can't just add min conversation we have to finish yeah. like the room or something so that whole time slot bloated unfortunately but it was supposed to be 30 minute videos <laughs> Wow, I'm seeing a consistency here. It seems like uh, Toaster's bloating all these video links out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Toaster's just so good at inflating things. Uh, but but yeah, the uh, that's just that just became uh, what? That took a second to hit. That, that took a second. A... <laughs> Sorry, I was in the middle of eating a mandarin orange. I wasn't ready to hear that shit yet. I just actually <laughs> swallowed it. The yeah, the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> He's dying. I've killed him. It's a sex <laughs> joke. But overall, He's talking the, about God. Over the overall, the entire thing was like that's like it was supposed to be ten hours of video per day, not counting multiplayer. So six hours of one hour videos on six days, and then then eight half an hour videos spread over the remaining time slot adds up to ten hours. The current thing will once again be ten hours of main time slot, which is my five days a week. And then the two remaining days will just be bleh, multiplayer videos, whatever, whatever multiplayer videos I have. Uh, I mean, there's not like a drought in content options. It's not like you can't. Find yeah, but it's just it's going play. from like so the problem is just time. But like it's the same amount of time overall. I'm just condensing it so that it's overall one video per day. But it's still the giant mess of it being one video per day, one video per week per game. So it's too spread out. So that's why when yeah. they wrap up, I'm then going to like yeah. pull these time slots and instead. <laughs> Um, instead sense. of having time yeah. slots for variety, I'm just going to have to, like, try to, in the background, enforce a variety by rotating between these genres as each game wraps up instead of trying to do them all at once. But that's my current approach while I, in the background, try to pursue an ADHD diagnosis to see if I can figure out how to write. Because, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm bad at making video essays. <laughs> People always this defend is... me. People always try to defend me when I say that. They're like, "No, you know, they're really good." I'm like, "Yeah, no, I know. I think they're good. I'm bad at making them. The process of <laughs> physically building them like a Lego set. I don't <laughs> like. I can't. I'm bad at that. You can't argue with me. I made one in 2023, and it was only an hour long. After making six hours of video essay in 2022, it's not. That's not good. I need to fix that. Give me drugs. <laughs> <laughs> not just that. I'm also making. I'm also making a lot of I'm, I've also been making a lot of changes in my personal life just in my room trying to like create environments to write in and I've on like my seventh iteration but I, I'm, I am literally trying other things to figure out how to make my brain work it's not literally just me like helplessly sitting here for the last year like I need I guess I need drugs it's I, I <laughs> dr the drugs are me being like no I've tried a lot I, this is a problem please somebody help me <laughs> Anyway, it's how do you very... what, want to talk about what you're doing, Toaster? Uh, yeah, I could talk about that. I just I wanted to interject that it, it's always very funny. It's it's ADHD is like not the same for everyone. I'm not saying you're saying that it is, but for me, you know, I've never had an issue just sitting down to fucking write. And so the 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 cuteness with which you go about your like set in setting of like, I'm going to get I'm going to get my little table and I'm going to put my iPad on it and disconnect my <laughs> Ethernet cable from my computer. Yes. So I can be in a I can be in a sensory deprivation tank so that I can write. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here. I'm like, I don't know, man, I got two TVs going on in my room. I'm listening to some exactly. King Gizzard and yeah. I'm writing at the same time. There's like different genres uh, of ADHD like there's like the it was like like hyper attentive and inattentive or something and yeah. it's like all yeah, of my yeah, friends yeah. that so many of my friends that have it have the one where they're always they have so much noise going like like stephanie was doing college while always having her tv running even though she was writing yeah. papers and i'm like what the mm -hmm. fuck meanwhile yeah, like yeah. if i'm at a library and someone starts quietly <laughs> talking in the corner i literally can't read my book i it just turns my brain off and now their conversations all that's happening and i can't I stop the... it entirety of my capstone while watching, watching the sopranos <laughs> yeah you you were like writing cape escape while while listening to original star wars star trek 
Uh, Doctor Who. Ever, Doctor Who. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever, uh, Toaster, did you ever watch or read uh, Space Bros? Uh, Uchu Kyodai? Yeah. The, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was clarifying that you're talking about a manga. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah, read, the, I've read the, I've read that manga. There's a really good example in there of Muta. Like he has literally like four sources of things oh, going yeah, on. Yeah, while he, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Like to give people, people example. Everyone around him is like, this guy's a weirdo, but he's sitting there just like comprehending hundreds of information with different <laughs> sources of like, yep. which is radio and shit going on. He's like, no, that's how I concentrate. I'm like what? <laughs> yeah. And that's how my ADHD works is I, I need, yeah. if I don't have two trains of thought going at once, yeah. one of them will fly off the rails. So I need two things to focus on at all points in time or else I will lose my mind. Toaster has um, watched fighting game videos at literally every panel we've ever gone to at any convention. <laughs> It's true. I He's do doing watch both yeah, the whole time. Uh, <laughs> like, to, like for the version of like what I've been going through for people that don't know, it's like when I was trying to like as, as my ever evolving fucking approaches to writing. One of my issues is like I don't have anywhere to like lay down, or I can't like sit in bed, or like I don't have a couch or other chairs anywhere because I'm trapped at my computer all the time. And I'm like, well, I gotta get away from my computer. So I'm like, okay, well, I bought this, I bought this iPad to draw on. And the iPad is so cumbersome to use for anything other than the exact thing I'm doing on it at a time because it's not a multi-screen thing with a keyboard and mouse that like, like, okay, well, I'll buy, I bought a floor chair, like an L-shaped little like backed chair thing that sits on the floor directly with no legs. And so I'm just kind of sprawled out there. That's and a I gotta, thing? Like a gamer chair? Kind of. I guess it's like some it's chair just like, no sorry sorry it's just there's a, so sorry I need to preface this there's two types of gamer chairs the one you're all knowing about which is like the actual it has an adjustable back gamer back it can, it can lay flat the, like a bed or it can like you can like oh it goes kick, 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 and you can like pull it up and it'll keep locking in the new position you put it into and then if you pull it all the way forward you can then lay it all the way back again uh it's a floor so, chair basically yeah it's a floor yeah, yeah the words I said uh, it's a chair. Yeah, with no I looked legs. it up, and it's a thing. Yeah, I thought you so were I, talking so, about because I don't have oh, room. For, I don't have like room for more furniture for the most part. So I got a floor chair, and then I got like a little like like uh, uh, breakfast and bed tray basically for that for my iPad. <laughs> okay. And so I, I so I set up with my little floor chair and my little tray, and I fucking just turn off the lights in my room and just face a corner and just try to like put myself in an isolation what? chamber just to fucking write where I don't just where I did I like it's too much work to get up to go to like my phone is... or my computer or to interact with this thing because my stupid computer is always uploading or rendering like I need it on I can't just like turn off my computer all day to write so sure. I'm trying... I... and like on some level I feel like using a shitty wireless keyboard for my iPad on Google Docs iPad is so like latency and shitty that like it's kind of like it increases my concentration because it's more work to just type at all because like it's so much shittier than using a computer and like okay. that was how I that's how I wrote most of my Black Mirror essay that was quote unquote finished but then I was unhappy with it but I did kind of finish it so it did work for its purpose it's just that I'm mad at parts of the essay I need to go back and fi fix it and I haven't been able to get the, the to be happy with that uh, yet and like okay. my most recent so, iteration is that I sit at my computer and I unplug my Ethernet cord from my computer and I'm writing offline in Open Office Writer instead in a bunch of separate documents for like here's my notes document and here's my outline document and here's my one I'm actually writing in and so on. And in the corner of my room, I've got my iPad, which does have the Internet because of Wi-Fi and it's just playing Beast to Study slash Relax 2 because it has a it has better speakers than my phone. And that's just like that's like creating background noise to like drown out the sound of stephanie and her boyfriend talking behind the wall because <laughs> otherwise i'll just think about that so if they get louder i'll turn on the fan because i have a box fan <laughs> and i'll just create white noise <laughs> to isolate from all the things that i'll start thinking about instead of the thing Jesus. but the big thing is i have to unplug my internet and because fucking i i have friends now which sucks and it's great. I love it. I had a great year in 2023, except for professionally, which is that like after as a result of the Ad Astra and Beastars videos, I've made so many connections in the furry community and I've gone to these conventions and I have all these people. But like these people will just DM me on Twitter or Discord or Telegram at any random time of day. And now that we're now a conversation just happening, and that's all I can think about. And I'm like, OK, well, fuck. And then suddenly it's 5 p.m. Like, well, fuck. There goes today. Like. So I just got to unplug the internet and close all these apps and not be accessible for big chunks of time. So I can at least try to just this once get a thousand words down for an essay, which is only about like seven minutes of a video. 
Uh, and that only ha- succeeds like one in three times I try. <laughs> hmm. So okay. that's why I haven't been making video essays. I've been putting all of my time into it and failing. <laughs> I want to die. Panic. I want to die. I want to die. My, uh, Give me drugs. <laughs> my, uh, my, my experience has been a little bit different from that. And, and it's... You know, I think we're both kind of circling the drain on on some similar findings in YouTube, but for to for the audience like just to go over sort of the change here, the the root of all of this is that traditional let's plays do not fare as well on YouTube because people have slowly over time shifted towards clicking on either exponentially shorter videos or exponentially longer videos the typical let's play historically has been anywhere between 40 to 60 ish minutes i would say on average um for this from the old time. days el yeah. shaddai playthrough with exactly 15 minutes and zero yes. seconds parts <laughs> yes i am aware of that too but th- we've shifted away from that and in as Let's Plays became longer, it was more like a TV episode, right? Like, here's here's 40 minutes of, the, of a game, here's 40 minutes here. Um, and I feel like most channels that got really big kind of hovered around that mark. Then over time, it shifted more towards what I call, like, compilation or, like, cut or edited Let's Plays, which are like, here's a clip show of all of the best moments of someone's playthroughs or episodes and like that shows up. So you're skipping a lot of the interstitial grinding, but like, you know, here's the funny thing that Aaron and, 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 uh, why can't I remember his name all of a sudden? Danny Daniel. Said, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, you know, here's, here's, you know, that thing. And here's the super clip of, of Markiplier playing a game and you, you don't need to walk him walk through the boring hallways. You can see him get scared 75 times. And like those got popular uh, and then as Let's Players began to hire more editors and like people who were just functionally handling all of their footage, the really long form Let's Plays began to slip in popularity. And I don't know what the exact reason is for that, because I do still think that there is a purpose and there is a market for, I guess, what I will call what I will refer to as like archival Let's Plays of this like very pure unfiltered here is one person's experience with a game here is their their playthrough unbothered by anything else like i think that there is a place for that because the audience still does interact with it it's just that in the current content ecosystem as we have moved more towards stream vods and streamers and live content i think people got used to vods being uploaded that were longer so like two to three hours each three to four hours each uh you know i think of like vine sauce or whatever like his vods channel the videos that get uploaded on there are like four hours long each like it's absurdly long but they do really well so people look for that kind of content and that means that when someone comes to your channel and they say hey i want to watch a let's play and they see that it has 200 episodes it doesn't matter the length of like the cumulative length, it might be, that might be 150 hours, right? Over 200 episodes, but they're less likely to click on that than they would be 12, 12 hour long episodes for whatever reason. And it's a very weird way of interfacing with YouTube, but it is a trend. It's a thing that's been happening. And I think that that also coincides with the, the rise in long form video essay and review content where now you type retrospective into YouTube and you can find 700 channels being like, here's my eight hour long essay about every single video game in this series. And like there are hundreds of those channels. So I think that's just where the content is going. And it's it's an interesting change in approach because before the logic of YouTube was maximize your notifications every day. YouTube will give you three notifications a day, upload three things up to three things a day constantly have people engaging with content that is swallowable and not too large to engage with and it will pay dividends um and so that was the approach that i took 
for my first year as a Let's Player. Uh, I took all my stream VODs. I took all my pre-recorded VODs. I cut them at about 40 minutes with, you know, some give or take whenever necessary. Uh, and the problem with that is that I play so many things that now if I log into my creator studio, let me, let's look at my, my let's look at my YouTube studio. Hold on. Uh, my most, my, my most forward scheduled video airs in January of 2025. Jeez. wow i thought i was forward with april but you're like yeah no i oh i am booked every single day until november 1st of this year you know, if uh, i if i ignore password in Baldur's gate my the rest of my schedule is backlogged until august yeah and so it was stressful to uh delete all of those videos yeah i for for the shortest yeah. period for the first time in like eight years my i had no scheduled videos for a few hours like i literally wiped the entire future of my channel off <laughs> so that i could yeah. because i needed to render all these videos into mega videos now to make the new yep. schedule work and combine them and so i'm like oh and fuck the calendar's empty my my issue mm. with this is like it's a good thing right it's a good thing to be scheduled but like the games that i'm playing on stream right now i finished quantum break two weeks ago and people are like when when can we see the vod and i'm like literally next year like you will see quantum break <laughs> air on my channel next year um that's and like wild. that's that's it's nice for me but it's like i know for a fact that that's not sustainable um and and to be fair, my pace is pretty crazy because I very intentionally set out to be like, I'm going to get a year ahead. So I have a year to figure out how the fuck to do this. Um, and, and so, you know, I, I'm scheduled way ahead and I have content that will slot into that schedule. I'm not even fully through the Castlevania series. Like my Castlevania VODs are uploaded until October. And I still have like seven games left to go in that series. So that will be going well into the next year. Um, but the the issue is that this is like the content is not going to grow. Um, I understand the problem with uploading as much as I do. And like I've spoken to my friends and stuff and they're like, you upload more content than I can. I have the bandwidth to interface with and it's like yeah yeah I, i'm aware of that right like part of this is a game where it's you that have it used to, to be get... good to do that yes like when i yeah. grew it was the the strategy was you uploaded a big variety of stuff because then everyone has something to watch yep you would yep. no exactly. you just never assumed that someone would watch eight videos a day that's stupid but yeah it's also stupid to assume anyone's going to watch all of your stuff no matter how much or little there is like and you know, yes. there's always people like you i don't care about that game yeah i don't exactly. like your furry visual novels so like so you may upload other stuff for those people but now yeah, it's like oh yeah. you uploaded stuff that some wrong. people don't watch the, now we're going to punish you every time that happens basically so now yeah. like now now you competing with yourself is no longer you offering diversity and variety across your channel it's you it's you specializing just being bad at being at youtube and now all of these people are, are all flagged by youtube as people that don't watch your channel so it stops showing them to you yeah them to, to, so, you to them my my approach is going to be a little bit different from Keith's. I definitely am going to change my VODs in my VOD strategy. The thing is, is I don't think I'm going to go through everything and download all my videos and then re-upload them as mega videos because that will just eat through the footage and I don't have the master files anymore. So it's whatever. Th High this, five, you're not having master files. High five. I mean, I had like literally a terabyte and I just deleted them. Yeah, I, was I like, also I deleted my have, master files. I, just, I, don't, I don't need this. Uh, it's not good practice, but whatever. Yeah, I just I don't have enough hard right. drives for it. I don't keep the master files forever, but I do have a dedicated... I do have a hard drive that all of my stuff that's rendered goes to, and I don't yeah. delete my rendered videos until they're actually public. So uh, I just yeah. recombined... So, all, I just, so I just recombined all of those. That's smart. The final if I did thing. that... Yeah. If I did that, I would run out of hard drive space. Yeah, uh, I, I just, I, yes, because you now. also because I I don't have a <laughs> year of it. a year of backlog. <laughs> yeah. So the the thing that I'm doing ultimately though is um, so I will definitely expand my vods and try to publish vods more frequently once I get through the stuff on my stream schedule that I have been playing 
like my like i'm sorry to say like control and quantum break are gonna air next year just is the way it is there's there's no way i'm gonna be able to combine those and get them out earlier. it's actually beyond uh, your control Ooh. yeah that's out of my hands um but when my when i start doing new games for the channel and not just these ongoing series i will be making those vods public in bigger batches more quickly so they'll just be going up whenever i can put them up i'll be it'll be four hours of castlevania four hours of you know whatever i guess not castlevania but whatever game i'm playing right two hours a night three hours a night um to try and and get that and then my other strategy here is very similar to what keith did but very different also um i think the thing with streamers like me is that my content is slightly different than let's plays i'm definitely let's playing games but my format is really different and i come from the the twitch world of like i'm streaming something and i'm talking to my audience and the, like my audience is interacting with me and they're reacting to the games at the same time so as i switch more towards vods my toaster williams channel will probably become more of a vods repository um yeah in styling That's than it will be purely let's plays and for most people for people who are like listening and who haven't seen my channel like that won't actually be much of a distinguishable change but it is a change in approach um because my more main channel and i think the channel that will matter more is going to be my second channel, which is the channel that I put up my reviews on. So I'm making a second channel for game reviews of the games that I play on stream. And the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, there are lots of games that my patrons and my fans and like people that I talk with on Keith's Discord and stuff, and they're like, oh, I would love to see you play thief and i'm like cool i've been playing thief for eight weeks you have never shown up in chat and they're like yeah well <laughs> i just don't have the time to watch a full let's play and i'm like okay but they still want to hear me talk about thief right and they're more they're more likely to click on a 40 minute long or hour long thief review yep than they are to watch 32 hours of my thief playthrough funny that uh, and and the thing with that is is that people are more willing to make the jump on content they think is interesting but just are never gonna play uh than they they're, they're are just more likely to watch like a grim beard or a civvy yes those two different exactly. approaches so civvy is so, like a review through slash talk through like you yeah. play the game but then you get it into a highlight reel and you talk yeah while it's happening like it's happening in a narrated yeah. scripted but real time thing yeah so that's that's my goal is like i'm i'm gonna make this second channel and i'm going to pivot my twitch and my patreon stuff from picking time slots and like what games are gonna go in each slot for each day to which game do you want to watch me play so I can collect footage for a video review. Uh, and then hopefully that will spin the flywheel of getting people familiar with me and my voice and my thoughts. And then they'll watch uh, the Twitch stream and they'll find the Twitch stream or the YouTube channel or the VOD channel or whatever. Um, and hopefully that will work. And so right now uh, we went through, we did a video project um, on stream for a few weeks for I, literally a week straight it only took six days i played every single game in the panzer dragoon series and i collected all the footage for that and i'm uh nine minutes into a video review of that experience um i've been working with andrew on revamping a lot of my stream visuals and and getting video files so that i can accurately make the the sort of aesthetic that i want to make for these videos and it's been going really well um but it's going to mark a really big change and i think i'm hoping that it will be good um 
my my keystones here for inspiration are channels like Grimbeard and King K and Majeweler. Um, I really like uh, Dungeon Chill as well. His stuff is really good. Uh, but yeah, I just I want to make more exploratory review content. Uh, very explicitly, I don't want to do video essays. Because I think a review and a video essay are two very different things. Yes. And I have no interest in more than cursory analysis. I don't necessarily have a thesis with every single video I want to make other than I think this thing is neat or maybe you shouldn't play this. Uh, but I think the goal is more. The dirty to secret just... of my Monster Hunter video is it's just a review. <laughs> yeah. I, I think ultimately my goal is just to see, hey, I played this thing. It's got interesting qualities. Here are some of those qualities. This is the feeling it gave me. I think the design is cool. There you go. Uh, and, and to kind of create like a cozy or a homey atmosphere that people can kind of put on in the background. Because let me tell you, if my viewing habits are any indication... I have watched the entirety of Grimbeard's Beard's catalog 10, 12 times, maybe, <laughs> uh, just because it's content you can put on in the background and really enjoy it. And it's just a, it's a vibe and I want to go to there. So it's just, um, you know, I just kind of want to cultivate something like that. Open the best bit. for you. Looking forward to your crossover with Grimbeard one year from now where you are two separate sets of disembodied hands with paint, nail polish. Yes, I will should, see. You will we'll see. Fist bump gothically on camera. <laughs> I would love that. I would love that. Uh, yep. Don't bump. get my hopes. Oh. Don't get my hopes up. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I don't know. That's my goal. So I'm I'm about I'm done with the intro of my my first review, and I'm like I worked all night. I I put a good a solid twelve hours of video editing work into. Yeah. Eight minutes of footage. <laughs> this is this is all just this is all just that cyberpunk meme, but it's the uh the head's like, wow, cool video channel and, and the arrow flying over your head that you're missing is just that is just says Toaster just wants to be goth again. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> I uh, that, that's my goal. That's what I'm doing. It's funny because you two have two very distinct approaches to dealing with the problem of YouTube just going algorithm only. I mean, both like, of our approaches the, is to work on scripted content on the other channel. <laughs> it is true. It is true. Yeah, yeah. The uh, that's fair, but like the type of scripted content is is uh, and, very and different. Particularly yeah. the way it relates to your main content is is very different. Obviously, I, like even when you search on YouTube, you, you, I was just doing a search earlier, and um, uh, let me see if I still remember what I was searching for. I don't have the, the tab anymore. Uh, maybe it was floor chairs. I don't remember. But it was. It, imagine it was floor chairs. I was looking for floor chairs on YouTube, uh, and I guess guess what? I get recommended a a video about some CPU, and it's just oh, I kind of want to watch that, and yep. that's how YouTube works. <laughs> instead of instead of showing you stuff that uh, that you want to see, if yep. you scroll too much, now I oh, how about some some other stuff that you've seen already instead? That's the thing is and, I I can't uh, entirely chalk it to. Uh, I can't entirely chalk the death of Let's Plays to viewer habits. Not entirely. No, it's sound to you. Because yeah, yeah. it's algorithm. It's the it's the thing redirecting people to other things that I think will do better. And sometimes that's informed by viewer habits, but there's also like this whole like, oh, the police are using AI in these neighborhoods or something. It's like, well, this this thing's creating the patterns that are, and it's fucking with the yeah. data, and that's creating a feedback loop where it then goes yeah. further and further in a specific direction because it's a black box that even the people who made it don't know how it works. And they're trying to program things to get the thing to tell you how it works but they also can't tell if it's lying when it tells you that <laughs> like that's the level of Man, black yeah. box that half created. of machine learning <laughs> even is that's just such a shit show someone should make like a terrifying series about this and yeah. talk about the social implications that but like, could arise from but like the oh, ai bullet bullet. the ai is supposed to reflect viewer habits and and keep you on the platform but it also is affecting the data in doing so and then basing its data on the data it affected on an infinite loop after years so Entire genres yeah, rise and fall a, based on that. Board. It's like suddenly cooking channels, the most popular thing, and Let's Plays are nuked from orbit, and the, the planet is glassed. <laughs> Wait, yeah. cooking channels are popular again? 
Oh, yeah. yes. Cooking channels have been very oh. popular for the last few years. It's time to return, then. I'm excited. <laughs> but the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but the... Uh... Yeah, I can see... A... But, uh, one, one day I can uh, see a future happening where it's like, I just don't have a, a schedule on any of my channels. It's just like, I don't know, man. I finish a video essay every other month, and... In the background, I'm just kind of recording Let's Plays, and I, whenever I finish one, it's just uploaded as one video. Just a mega video, because that's what the algorithm is demands, is you have to upload Thief 7 as one video, or else no one will watch part two. Yeah. As, as it is right now, I think you could get away with not having a schedule as long as you upload at least one video per week. Yeah, no, I can. On... I just it's just the part of me that has to justify my existence by just, working oh, all the I time see. and also trying to keep my audience happy by not just disappearing. <laughs> I've been sort of uh, running a, a weird experiment with my channel for the last couple of years uh, because I managed to play two very long games to do two particularly very long games, Elden Ring and, and Baldur's Gate Three. They both have actually I don't know how I think Elden Ring is 180 something episodes instead of. 260 or something, which is how long Baldur's Gate 3 went, uh, edited as well. So no downtime, and it's I, I couldn't keep episodes down to 30 minutes. Sometimes it goes over. But um, I've, been, I've been doing the experiment of uh, basically only publishing one or two at most uh, Let's Plays at a time, one video per day. And honestly, I haven't seen that much of a decrease. I have seen a decrease in views. And in participation, uh, in comments and stuff, but I haven't seen that much of, of a of a decrease uh, in comparison to what I would have expected back when I was publishing six videos a day or five. Yeah, and uh, I'm thinking I'm thinking also of of changing the style of videos I upload. I want to still have the VODs. I want to still be able to point people to the full playthrough if they want to see the whole thing or, if, you mm -hmm. know, especially with games where I have multiple tries of the same thing or whatever. But I, th I, th I think particularly for role playing games, but not just, but you know, for anything that's new, it, this applies. But for old role playing games, there's a value in, you know, me sitting down to play, uh, you know, Baldur's Gate one on on Twitch and just having a good time and, and playing it, uh, collecting all the footage and collecting all the commentary as well, and then making, you know, uh, a video about specifically. You know what happens to Jahira? What does Jahira do with yeah. with the with Minsk and stuff? And just make a video that is half commentary and half just me playing the game and showing the certain parts. And the commentary would be just to tie things together. And yeah. I think that sort of video not only is it more clickable because you can just make you can just make a uh, a thumbnail and and, and a, a title that is tailor made for that sort of content. People want to know, you know, original Bal Jahira in the original Baldur's Gate question mark. You'll never believe what happens to her in episode six or what, you know, that sort uh, of yeah. stuff. Uh, but I can also, it, it's more creatively fulfilling, especially for all the games that I'm more familiar with and, and more. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's just, it's interesting to tell that story of, of being like, you know, I've definitely oh, consumables in Baldur's Gate One. I hate them. Let's make a video about that. Yeah, <laughs> and explain. I've seen I've seen a lot of like interesting. You, you know, I think I think a format that's really popular, especially with games like Baldur's Gate One, where there are builds and stuff, is like this is the saga of of Joe Ladlehands. He's a he's a barbarian that I made who only uses ladles, and then instead of having a 120 hour long playthrough, it's like. Here's 20 minutes of how Joe Ladlehands handles every single moment and how the build works yeah. with some funny and punchy dialogue. And like, you know, you yeah. focus in on the little things. And I think that yeah. works. I, th I think that's something that's that does perform pretty well, especially right now. I've seen so many videos like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the direction that a lot of these like really long form RPG playthroughs is like are slowly heading to. I mean, just like at Baldur's Gate 3, like people aren't. I mean, obviously that game is massively popular and playthroughs have gone viral and stuff, but like the big video clips that everyone thinks of are like, here, like, here's a, here's my edited one hour long video of my entire playthrough of me playing a halfling that like, that throws another halfling as my entire gimmick. Like that's, that's the whole thing. It's, it's a, <laughs> that's fun, it's a dad who throws his child at enemies for damage, like things like that, <laughs> like just like goofy role playing. So I like that. That's good. But uh, I, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's more or less where I'm coming from, but I want it to be uh, an, 
both a justification for me recording mm -hmm. and playing the games, but also an entry to people who want to see the whole thing. Who want to see the whole thing, yeah. And yeah, just ha yeah. I think that's it, though. I think that's what we need to do is, like, I think that there is a place for VODs. It's just VODs can't be the f the only the content. focus anymore. Yeah. 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 And by and large, like, no like a noticeable Sorry, trend no. of what really changed is that, like, I've had this Patreon series in the background for, like, nine years now. Like... It's like I made a Patreon to be like, hey, guys, I need to make a choice between like doing my my full time job or YouTube. I can't keep doing both. It's killing me back in 2015. And then I made a Patreon. And when people fire signed up, I literally made tiers based on what amounts some people signed up at because it was like, oh, geez, people oh, someone signed up at 15 a uh, nominator, I guess, whatever. Because uh, I was just like, so that's so amazing. Somebody signed up for fifteen dollars. But I made like a nomination tier and a voting tier and like that was an incredible system for a while there. Like I, at, at the time, if I looked at any other Let's Player or gaming channels Patreon account, I was demolishing them. I usually was was beating them just in terms of raw Patreon. But if not, I, if I compared our like audience sizes, I was like my ratio was out of control. <laughs> like I had clearly mm -hmm. found a system that people liked engaging with, but then. But then what happened is as it grew, it kind of stopped working in a way. And that one might just be the like, the, the answer kind of got more boring. But like, at the end of the day, what I noticed is that for, for like seven of those years, the Patreon game would be the most popular thing on the entire channel almost all the time. Unless there was like a Souls game that came out or something. Or, or something like that was a, a stunt that was just extremely Keith core, I guess. But uh, for like the last two or three years... The Patreon series has been struggling to even maintain viewership. Like they they fall apart completely, and part of it mm. is that, and it's like, part of it is that people keep voting for these really long RPGs, and part of it's just like this element of like, also like AAA games, but like it's this thing where like, it became a thing where it started being a, an exhibition of like how different viewer habits are versus viewer desires or wants or what yeah. they say they want. Yeah. You know, I, I, I call it like the, the Netflix, my list effect, because even, even a decade ago when I first had an access to a Netflix account, I remember adding all these like interesting looking documentaries to my Netflix, my list. Cause I'll totally like, I, yeah, I would like to be somebody who watched those <laughs> and then like, and then never watching a single one of them and half and almost always like watching something that the thing suggested to me instead of actually going through my own list of pinned things I meant to get to on Netflix. And it's like, more and more that's the experience on youtube is that like if you and like with let's plays and like what the the stuff that people view as the correct answer versus what they actually do like i would like a rich black coffee or uh, medium rare is the exact only correct way to have a steak like all these things that people like people are trained to say certain things in a similar way they're like ocarina of time is the best video game of all time and blah 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 like there's like and th those sort of like hive mind opinions create voting results, but they don't create viewership. So what happens is people yeah. will vote for the thing that is the infinite classic game that you're supposed to say is the best thing ever. And those kinds of and like big, big deal games keep winning the vote. And then people keep not showing up to vote to actually watch the thing. Like how nobody really like no one watched Planescape Torment. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> that did not work <laughs> out. Like for despite like despite its reputation being Planescape Torment, <laughs> people did not show up to watch that game. And similarly, like Fallout New Vegas and uh Baldur's Gate 3, they just have not brought the viewership in despite people being so sure that they wanted to watch it. Like I remember correctly, Baldur's Gate 3 had a huge lead in the vote. Yeah. But who cares? <laughs> I mean, and that that's when you also get to the aspect of like people voting on things they're like oh i want to see keith baldur's gate 3 play through but also i want to play baldur's gate 3 so i'll wait for later and they're, it's like they're yeah. banking they're yeah, banking yeah. you on doing it where they're like please do this so that when i'm ready it will be available for me and i do not need to wait to watch the content and which then is in reality like, they also won't it. come back and watch it like they're not gonna remember. yeah <laughs> they're, not, they're gonna remember yeah they're gonna play baldur's gate three more times so solo and then never return yeah, that's one advantage of playing older role-playing games is that you sort of get away from the spoiler kind of 
but only if you can um, get them to click on it. <laughs> well, yeah, you're talking about because if you play older games and no one clicks in the first place, then <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, that's why I think I think that is why. But there's also a struggle is that just like entire genres of games just don't are bad. They're just bad. Like, like akin to wow. like how Toaster or was like, or, talks about how like he bad. like. Well, I mean, like, yeah, for the content, like each of these platforms oh, yeah. has different types of content that work on them. Like, yeah, like Toaster says he won't. And generally speaking, he usually says, I will not play an RPG on this channel on his on his let's on his uh, streaming yeah. channel. Like, that's why he recorded uh, Final Fantasy 16 off stream and, and uploaded it separately is because like playing a long narrative driven thing that people are supposed to be able to tune in and out for is not good. Like yeah. the game needs to be immediately contextually appealing to for a stream it's like and and, in a different way let's plays just have to be like they don't have to work that way because they because ideally you are starting from the start but there's like a pacing to games that you let's play like it's why it's so much better to play like nintendo games or like Mm -hmm. slightly child focused games or like a certain so, so, like not, not by what you mean like not, not just only nintendo games but also games that feel like nintendo games like that kind of like category of game is like so well paced that like a zelda game will feel like something's happening every episode in a way that's different from elden ring where it feels like the game's just here to exist as largely as possible <laughs> and so and so like in that way like the perfect nexus is that like fucking the ultimate stream game and let's play game is like fear and hunger because it's like mm-hmm. this. It's like it has it has zero fat on its on its combat. It has no. It has, it has very little repetition except for in the form of punishment. In that Dark Soulsy, everything's going bad way. It has randomization. It has surprises for both the variables that were reset in the thing, the number of different routes you can be setting up on accident. They don't even know work that way. Uh, the mistakes that can be made the things that the let's that the player doesn't know or the things that the audience don't know like there's so many different surprises that are happening rapid fire and it's going so well like that's like the ultimate stream game and the ultimate let's play game if it wasn't for the fact that you <laughs> that it's like you're like oh god can i even air this because <laughs> of what's happening on the screen yep. whereas like so many other games like no one gives a fuck about for horizon Vi- forbidden west i don't care if it yeah. wins yeah. game of the year no one wants to watch that video game like, yeah. oh, wow, you did a press the crafting button and then it fought the dinosaur again. Let's do this 70 more times. It's like, a gr- wow, the, the ray tracing. <laughs> it's so it's interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to me because, you know, I, I've i played a lot of video games the past year. I played 73 video games last year on stream. That's a lot of games to play on stream in the course of a year. And, like, the games that performed the best were very shocking to learn. Like... Uh, so I was correct in my assumption that like JRPGs really specifically like anything with a lot of reading is actually really, really bad for a stream. Uh, because as much as people are here to listen to me, they don't want to just listen to me read every character. Yeah. And then on the other hand, games that are like, yeah, games that are really narrative and cinematic also do really poorly on stream. So just using uh, different examples, like my Final Fantasy 16 playthrough is just dead in the water and views just doesn't do well. Uh, you know, uh, my my rule of Rose playthrough is the playthrough that did like absurdly well for what it was, which is really interesting. I think the- I sincerely think that an unsung hero of why a part of why Dark Souls took off so well is that it was in an Internet age where it was good internet content. Like yes, Dark Souls yeah. doesn't have a bloated story that that stops you dead in your tracks for more than thirty seconds at a time ever. Yeah. So it's just always the yeah. part that people like watching is happening the whole mm-hmm. time, and that's why it's always yeah. been a good thing for me to play. And it's been like that's how I got a career. <laughs> like I started. Yeah. My the backbone of me getting any views in the first place was Demon Souls, Dark Souls One, Dark Souls Two, and then lit, su- the surprising takeoff was puzzle games. But like. Dark Souls is evergreen good content because it's just yep. none of the bullshit that makes people stop watching is there. Yeah. Nobody actually wants to watch Final Fantasy 13. No, <laughs> even, no, no, not, no, not no, even yeah, Final yeah, Fantasy no. 13 fans want to watch Final Fantasy 13 as yeah. a let's play. And then so, you know it's it's interesting because like I think I think too like at, just to get to, to what you were saying earlier is like there are certain things that are just really good because they're easy tune in tune out content like 
survival horror games are the i honestly think the perfect let's play game like i think from a stream perspective from a vods perspective people just will tune into silent hill one and be like what the fuck is that what's going on on screen and then like but there's like dialogue and cutscenes that are pretty the interesting when they pop up and like you say that in like I weird when you read and when you, when you dialogue, it, yeah. exactly <laughs> like it's interesting like it's it works for people because it's still going to be kind of non-contextualized no matter what but in the moment there's like exciting exciting gameplay quote unquote you know like things like that and you know alan, alan wake 2 did really well for me on vod and on stream i was averaging like 40 to 50 viewers a stream on alan wake 2 which was great and like you know that sort of game does really well but then contrast that with you know pentiment which fucking no one watched fucking no one watched my pentiment series which is fine uh that game was fine like i'm not i'm not broken up about it but it's just like there are some things where it doesn't matter how interesting the story is, how good it is, how much people want to watch it. At a certain point, content becomes unwatchable when it's not uh, paced enough to to drip feed that that need for new like serotonin, basically. Uh, and some genres of game are just really bad at that. And like, yeah, I'm sure there are people out there that want to watch someone play a Zachtronics game just to figure it out because they can't. But like that is not a mass audience. You know, you need you need a, a tight balance between things happening in a game, gameplay happening and like your commentary. And from a play from a player perspective, from a from the Let's Players perspective, like man i reading a jrpg on stream makes me want to drive nails through my brain like it's <laughs> it's so exhausting it's it is exhausting to do but if i'm playing a game that has a pretty decent mix of like gameplay downtime where i can just vamp about random shit and talk and cut scenes that are really interesting and then like dialogue i have to read like as long as there's a balance there it gives me time enough to recover so that i can like give a better performance and like it you know come up with things to think about because if a game is non-stop fucking lore dumping on me in dialogue i have to read out loud like my brain can't keep up with that shit there's no way that i'm gonna remember what i want to say <laughs> like it's just too too yeah. much i it's hard you, you mentioned Pentiment, and I think Pentiment may be a good example of what I may do in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, like my highlight of Pentiment is, um, well, there's, there's many, but one in specific of my first blind playthrough was when I realized <clears throat> how the characters are written to to be always sort of vignettes of their full life. So the characters aren't... Yep. They're not. They were not conceptualized to be part of the story that the game tells. They're conceptualized as whole people first, and then they play a role. But it's just part of their life. It's just a certain thing. And I don't remember exactly where it was, but I can give you an example of one a part of that realization later in the game. Uh, no spoilers. There's no need to spoil. Uh, but later in the game, there's people talking about a major event that happens in at the end. I think of Act Two or act one there's a, there's like a, a big event that happens that changes the life of the, everybody in the village um and um and obviously you see that as a player you see that from the you know for sort of first person sort of situation you're like there and you see you have your own motivations and you have your own opinions about what is happening uh and then in the third act of the game you get to hear the perspectives of different characters talking about that event and some people don't see that as a big deal. Some people see it as as the worst thing that happens. But also, the moment like there's this one character that says, "Oh, that was that was the worst thing that could have ever happened," and then th this other character says, "Yeah, but if that hadn't happened, then we wouldn't be here, or you know, maybe we wouldn't have, you know, whatever the the changes that happen after after that." And they they sort of change their opinion just because of the conversation and just having these very human sort of reactions to enormous events that in a normal story. In a normal story, these are landmark event, events. The, that's the point of the story is to tell about this thing that happens in the middle of the game and how that affects your character or the characters you interact with. So Pentiment is written, I, th I felt that it was written in a very different way than a normal story, precisely because the characters involved have malleable and, and like sort of hidden opinions about what happens. 
And I thought yeah. that was that that gave the characters, even though they don't necessarily all have tremendous, enormous amounts of dialogue, uh, but that it give it, gave, it gives the character a lot of depth. And just this is just to, uh, as a preamble, uh, because the moment I realized that in my let's play or in my playthrough, I I sort of go on a ramble about trying to explain this and, and using examples. So that's the sort of video that I think going back, I would be able to to point out and say and make a video titled Pentiment has characters unlike any other game or something like that. And and with a, a, a one or two minute uh, narrated intro, I could explain what's going on. And obviously that's spoilers, but I would be able to make a, a little half an hour excerpt of why I think this is an, an interesting thing for Pentiment. And it would be more digestible than a full Let's Play. And uh, it also would be, you know, an introduction to a Let's Play if people were interested in that. But but it's just it's really at the end of the day it's a half measure a half measure between well it's not even a half measure it's just half fasting a a, a sort of a full on uh, what's the word essay about the game because I could make an essay and just you know oh I played Pentiment let's make an essay about this one thing or make another essay about this other thing but obviously I don't have time for that and it's very intensive and I don't have experience doing that either so yeah. Uh, I actually, uh, uh, it, it, this reminds me about one of your uh, recent Let's Plays, Keith, Talos 2, or Talos Principle 2, uh, where right at the start, right in the first episode, you have this this really cool reaction to realizing the twist at the start of the game. You can make, you know, it, it's, a, it's an example of that. You can make a video just saying, Talos 2 wants to surprise returning players. <laughs> and it's just about your reaction to realizing what's going on. Because that's a cool reaction. And even if people don't know you, because they're new play, hopefully they're new viewers, right? Because you want to attract new viewers. Yeah. Uh, but if people don't, don't know you, get to see a human reaction to this thing, and it, it sets up the game as well. So you're like, you know, obviously the game has, you know, it's it's a long drawn out puzzle game <laughs> with a lot of dialogue at the start. But uh, but yeah, I don't know. I thought it was a cool. the The first episode was cool because you got to show that that surprise of the the twist at the beginning. Yep, Talos done pulled an Assassin's Creed style moment. Like you're like, hang on a minute. <laughs> this is an introduction to yeah. a game. Man, that was I remember looking forward to Assassin's Creed and like a not insignificant amount of Assassin's Creed hitting the hard was the fact that like as it launched, everyone they, they kept a ba a very a huge amount of uh, thing about the narrative that's immediately important to it, a secret. And it was very funny mm -hmm. being on old school video game gaming forums where people would talk about things and immediately there were like rules in place to not talk about the thing in Assassin's Creed because you'd be spoiling it for the new players that are all getting it. And that, that's like absurd as a concept now because Assassin's Creed is yeah. 75 games and is the most boring possible concept you could think about. But once upon a time... That first game was a shock <laughs> when it first came out, and ev and everyone was like having to like enforce rules about the basics of even discussing it because you'd like ruin it for people. There's still games like that. I mean, Outer Wilds is one like that. Yeah, there's, I, game, I there's games that do stuff. Although I think I think Outer Wilds is one of those frustrating cases where it's like you can hit people with the surprise. But you ha it's like one of those cases like Outer like Outer Wilds or the movie Caliber are like pieces of media where it's cool to be surprised by what they do. But if you even look at the basic like promotional material or the store page about it, it'll tell you the thing up front and ruin that moment. Mm. I think I think the Outer Wilds page just tells you what happens in it. I don't think that it's yeah, like a, I, got, I don't think it's a reveal it's in, intended to be a reveal necessarily but it is really cool and you don't know what's going to happen yeah if you just but get the, told I, hey I, it's I, a cool I, space puzzle game check it out it sounds like your thing and that's all you hear then like out of all it's gonna send you for a bit of a ride a couple out about in, uh, within the first <laughs> hour or two because i spent a bunch of time exploring the planet wow that's a lot of that's, yeah, the, that's one of the funny things about that, that game big. is that it cheats yeah, it does. It doesn't the timer doesn't start? I don't you think leave. I ever beat it. I don't think I could get through it. I think I did my yeah. You didn't have like the like, you didn't have like the mind for it, like processing what you were supposed to no. like be curious about. Like you didn't care. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, I just immediately got demotivated. I was like, I don't really want to explore this place. I'm out, and then just left. 
and then just like okay that's it i guess it's a there's so many cool self driving but it's a self motivating game like you have to be it, motivated well, yeah, to keep exploring yeah. And my mode, main motivation in video games is to cause problems for people. <laughs> like I need to cause problems, and I cannot do that in outer in outer wilds. It's just no. about like, it's just about uncovering something, figuring out something. It's like, yeah, but who is it hurting? Who is it hurting to do that? No one. I'm not gonna <laughs> be here. I'm going home. Like, no. Yeah, it's, it's such a beautiful outer game. Wild, yeah, you, or you outer do have world. to be self driven to actually accomplish anything in it. Yeah, I think that's what makes it also. I I think I, like that is inherent to its beauty, though. Like imagine you forcing yourself through outer wilds. Like you're like, uh like you're literally like you're treating the fucking computer like it's a a quest log <laughs> and not like yeah, a notes yeah. thing to help you. Like oh yeah, now I yeah. have to go there, I guess. Uh. <laughs> that's, that's literally what it was like, and I just that's how I knew the game wasn't for me. You just kind of go, oh, okay, well, yeah, uh, I guess next time. But I think that's also important is that I don't I don't think every game needs to be much like, you know, yeah. videos on YouTube. I don't think everything needs to be for everyone. And I think that becomes a conflict of interest with yeah. something that makes its entire monetary success by making content for everyone. Like if you want every if you want as many people as possible, you're not going to get the best possible content like that's it, the two things can't always overlap. Sometimes the best content isn't for everyone. Um, it's one of my one of the funniest things to me about uh, like this podcast sometimes is that it gets called a circle jerk. Like we're all just agreeing with each other, and I'm like, I mean, sure, we don't have a Nazi on the podcast, I guess, but like, and, <laughs> I, I I hosted a I channel with Andrew for almost a decade, and we have completely incompatible taste in art. <laughs> just yes, all art yeah. <laughs> we don't we don't ha we never like the same thing except portal 2 <laughs> yeah andrew's got insane taste and and here's the thing i'm fine with that i don't expect the world yeah. to bend its neck to to fit my needs i am a lunatic but it is weird to see like the idea that everything must fit into yeah. a box and it's like, oh boy, let me tell you about not being the target demographic for anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the only things we fun. ever liked at the same time were Portal 2 and like Plinket reviews. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one thing I ever recommended to Andrew. I like said, I like, because ba back in the day when Plinket reviews were good, because they kind of fell off hard like five years ago, uh, like seven years oh my god it's been a while since the last yeah it's been out. almost a decade yeah uh but uh i used to show people the avatar video because it's only 20 minutes long and that andrew was sold hard i think by the time i came back to his house to record the next game he had binged all of them <laughs> <laughs> i'm like andrew liked something ever also calling us I, a circle you know, jerk I, yeah but 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 this i mean it, it it probably happens a bunch but uh in this particular episode we all have th well andrew hasn't talked about yeah this. we all jerk well, each other off all the time it happens constantly <laughs> yeah <laughs> but while we're but while we're doing that we have three different approaches to our youtube channels that we're planning on doing so yeah. what about you andrew how is that game by the happen? time the podcast ends every week we're just ankle deep in it uh, my plan is to essentially just make, uh, take my, I just record everything that I stream. I'm going to edit it into, or actually my plan is to edit things into individual episodes. And once, uh, once the individual episodes are finished airing, I'm going to upload a giant full version of the entire that's series a, at once. That's a smart thing to do. Yeah. Really um, and then that, that way someone can go, I'm going to watch it individually. Or someone's going to say, I'm going to wait till it's done and then watch a giant fucking 18 hour <laughs> video yeah. of video game. There's a limit, though. It's 12 hours maximum. Sure, but you can still, I mean, 12 yeah. hours is when a When games lot, get and... too long, eventually you're like, okay, fuck, part two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's, you know, like at some point. Or, hey, you know, maybe I'll figure it, it out maybe i'll just host the yeah just edit it down or something the, it's the, just the it, 12 it hour equivalent to... of a highlight video where you're like no game needs to be longer than 12 hours long <laughs> i'll just yeah, make so my, it 12 my, hours long i'll fix it <laughs> my actually i so i had two problems one is or two ideas one is the inverse of that which is what if i take the individual episodes and make them more condensed make them more interesting and engaging and then just have a giant dump 
like here's the vi like here it is here's the full let's play if you want that otherwise here's like condensed episodes that are really engaging to watch on a small bite size level um which is essentially what streamer vods are which is hey i'm gonna put you know i'm gonna put like a bunch of clips on here that are really funny but also here's a giant dump of like a 12-hour stream i did and people seem to like both options it's hard because again you're trying to fit you're trying to fit a lot of people's wants i was definitely tripping up channel. on the fact that you were like I was just watching that you were like kind of doing your entire Elden Ring playthrough twice on the same channel. Like it was, there yeah. was two versions of the playthrough running in parallel. You had there every every like four hour VOD was staying up, but also you were playing the videos. It's like, yeah, and oh, what are you gonna say? I just, I just like it's like you gotta adapt. Like there's just this, this, one of these approaches will work. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah, like that's the thing is I don't I, I can't tell you any more with any more clarity than anybody else about like what is going to work on my channel. Um, it is always up to the whims of people like don't I, I can't really communicate to. It's like I can't talk to that many people and figure out what they want. And voting like Keith does with his Patreon clearly isn't an indicator of like return. Yeah, it's the thing is it's provably so, not effective to ask people what they actually want because they're wrong. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I have to like. I have to guess. I just have to say, I'm going to try a thing that I know is sustainable for me that I can do as a content creator, but also I'm going to hope it is appealing to you. And if it's not, then I guess I just adapt. I find a new way to do it. Or I, I don't know, I just break down Matt Pat's door and shake him until he tells me the algorithm secret. <laughs> The flaunting about about to give it to me you don't need it anymore it <laughs> <laughs> what's the theory <laughs> like, <laughs> like i just i don't i don't know what it is any more than anybody i don't i don't know how the algorithm work algorithm works any more than google knows how the algorithm works which is a concerning problem but also the equalizer uh and so it's just you know I, that's my approach is that I, I realistically for myself, I can I can stream forever. I can literally like I did the 24 hour stream. I woke up the next day and said, actually, I could do this again tomorrow. Like I would not have a problem <laughs> just streaming indefinitely. I could just stream until I die. But that doesn't turn into anything like I, I don't you know, I have to that doesn't help for somebody who's like, I want to watch a video that's 10 minutes long or whatever um like game grumps does like i'm gonna make a video that's 15 minutes and people like that bite-sized content okay but now i have to edit that i have to take the content and edit it into that way and then do it for like toaster levels of like lol i'll be here till 2023 or like 2028 i'll see you next year i guess yeah <laughs> yeah like, it's, it's it's this frustrating like okay guess what i have a trillion tons of content i have almost eight terabytes of edited or like recorded content that is unedited yet Ugh. what do i do about that do i you know do i do i go on fiverr <laughs> take like 500 bucks give like different series to seven different people and hope that one of them turns out good uh and then just you know like what i don't know what to do with all this shit and so I have to, my idea is, well, if I can cut it up into little pieces and then give one giant piece, I'm serving two customers at once. And that's as best as I can do. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't reach you all. I can't make the TikTok. I can't make the, you know, 10 minute, 15 minute. I can't make the regular Let's Play and a full thing at the same time. I'm, I'm just a little guy. I, I can't do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll there was die. two there was two signs like five years back that things were changing and like one of them was uh uh what, seeing splatter cat change his his content where he used to do playthroughs and then he just changed his entire channel to being here's a daily indie game let's try every day and that's the entire channel forever there will never be mm -hmm. a playthrough again and uh which at the <laughs> time <laughs> Which, like, at the time, people were mad about because they came for that content and then they stopped getting it. And so, and, but it worked. Like, it yeah. turns out if you only upload part ones of things, then you get good views on all your videos and your channel does better. So it's like, they, people, people felt betrayed or weren't happy about the change for obvious reasons, but also, like, it worked. So he wasn't wrong it's, to do it. Well, it what's, was, what's it worked, but it, it didn't work immediately. And, I have uh, I have noticed recently 
he's now down to one only one video a day instead of two, which he used to do for a while. I yeah, but it's I, just like I hate the idea. But, but it's just that because the moment the first thing you do when you do let's plays is you immediately like look at your stats and and you just see like oh part one does this and everything else immediately plummets and then. If, if it's a long series you're just kind of like having to maintain this low viewership thing in the long term if it's not doesn't become this evergreen spine of your channel and so on but like the other big thing was the, the fact thing, that yeah. there was this huge spike in these channels that upload video game the movie part one full playthrough like seo spam title that is like this big mm -hmm. single capsule video and one of the funniest things about that to me is always the fact that they're always called part one and they're the only part because yes. part one <laughs> is SEO. Is SEO like that's term. SEO yeah. is a thing people type to get views. So people will insanely title their videos part one when they're the only part because that's like literally being a consumable, searchable SEO capsule thing is more important than like anything about the the package or content making sense. It's like, oh, okay, that's <clears throat> that's the platform but, for gaming. Let's have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's about I tried, it's to, not about, I tried to resist wait, it. Wait, which sounds it sounds depressing, but it's not. Oh, it's not just about quality. Uh, it is almost always about uh, uh, analytics. If your video gets a lot of views, your channel's probably good. Is the way that the system in it in its most rudimentary form is operating. It's taking the numbers and turning those numbers into a good or bad assessment, and then using that assessment to push you to other people. Um, the problem is like you can't no one knows how people work, right? You can't just turn around and go like, I know exactly what's going to get a tr like 20 people to look at my video. And I know what's going to get 20 million people to look at a video. You can't really guess that you can you know, like you can't really pin that down. You can guess you can say, hey, I think maybe if I throw like two giant cars into a big pit, people will show up to watch that. Sure. But it's hard to do that the more specific you get like i'm gonna make a cooking video do people want to watch me make rice or do people want to watch me make uh rice that i dyed red and then put inside of a container that looks like a charizard like i'm gonna guarantee you people will probably watch the charizard one more but do you know for sure like how you know like can, can you for sure per, like guess that that's gonna be it and to do so means you're gonna set up a lot of things to make that possible you're going to go through a lot of steps you're going to get a bunch of food yeah, dye you're going to get some yeah. tins you're going to like there's a lot of upfront you're going to do to make that's a guess problem. that yeah. may not pay off and yeah. yeah editing you know like recording a games like that too am i going to sit here and play Baldur's gate 3 a fucking big game only for like two people to want to watch it uh, you know like it becomes it becomes a risk to do certain stuff and that is that's the fight uh, that is the real fight with uh, making a YouTube or making YouTube content is you need to you need to kind of know where you want to go. You need to kind of know what your what your audience wants to see or the audience you want to have wants to see. And you also need to kind of know how they're going to find it. Like, how are how are they going to search for this? Are they going to type in Charizard Rice or are they going to type in Pokemon <laughs> Eat? And you're like, what the fuck? Why would you type that in? But if that's what a thousand people type in, you better title your stupid video pokemon eat charizard <laughs> you know like it's there's so many angles and it's so frustrating but the best you can do is just make something you like make you know try and like fit it to what you see the the analytics performing with if everyone likes the part one maybe make a bunch of part ones of shit and then see which one gets the you know see what takes off i don't know i can't tell you what the the answer is but i can tell you that no, I think, i'm not I think doing a good job approach. And that's that's what needs to change. Yeah, the worst the worst one can do is just go with the flow. But in in the sense of I've been doing this for for five years or for ten years, and I'll just keep doing it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I, I, recently, the um, how oh, is it? ProZD is ProZD. Yeah, you'd wish uh, though. You'd wish it. that you could just be like, hey, I make this content and people like it, and they keep subscribing in larger numbers because they like it, and then that should just be enough. You could just be able to just keep making the thing that well, people like without changing yeah. it. I would love it that. It is enough. I would totally it is love enough. That. It is enough in the sense that every view, you know, every every per even if it's just one person watching all of your let's plays or one well, of the your let's plays. The struggle plays, is that everybody watches. Everybody consumes YouTube via the main page instead of the subscription page, and so entire genres yeah. stop working page? as a result where's that at <laughs> <laughs> what i'm saying what i'm saying is that if you if your goal isn't to 
because like I'm very glad to have uh, people enjoying and spending time with with me, basically watching my my stuff, and th that that's that's rewarding in and of itself. I I am glad to. It's basically I'm I'm you know I I, I like the, I really enjoy the process of playing games as if you know commentating is basically as if I have somebody next to me and I'm chatting right, and I also enjoy watching other people uh, do that. So. I'm I'm glad in that transaction, but if my goal is to grow my channel to to big numbers, I know I can't do that. Okay, it's not, it's not possible. So either I adapt my goal or I adapt the way I I, I do things. And and uh, it, you know you can't expect to you can't like I, I see. Yeah, I, I'm I, just I saying that it's, I'm just saying that it's not as simple as being like you're appealing to a niche versus a larger group or something. But it's like literally like no, yeah artificial things are happening to fuck with a thing beyond just the level of how niche your genre is like it's literally the algorithmic internet being like hey 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 look over here instead and then just not showing yeah. you the stuff that people subscribed to watch and said they wanted to watch yep. and so it's like you, there's mm -hmm. it's 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 worse than that unfortunately like i wish it was just the normal problem of you're a, you're hey you're just really into talking about magic the gathering card art every day and not everyone's into that <laughs> like like it's it's so much more than that than that specific problem of your content being too niche and that's the sad thing is that increasingly yeah, it isn't about yeah. this this is a sequel in a way to our previous discussion about the how the internet going to shit and is that it used to be a more it used to be significantly more permissible and viable to just be a niche dude and have niche stuff yeah. and have that be a thing that people can congeal around and find and and enjoy and the new internet hates and also, niches <laughs> but also it used to be more feasible for a, that niche dude to make a big thing out of the niche and to be yeah. very successful doing the niche stuff these days no you, you're not you're going to be successful with the platform wants you to be successful if it's well, better for them i Damn. i think there is slightly more to it than that because I do think that people do carve out niches and and I've seen enough like micro genres on YouTube to know that there are thriving strange little communities that still exist the issue is just that people we live in an era where people simultaneously want to balk authority and and uh Per, the the perception that there is a tastemaker in an audience but really people do like want the monopoly so to speak like and, and what i mean by that is like oh i don't need to watch uh 75 different uh tech review channels i'm subscribed to gamers nexus they just do mm. all the things that i want mm. i don't need to watch joe schmo's hardware benchmark video channel I can watch Digital Foundry. And so like everyone is looking for their one golden goose for whatever topic they're they're watching, right? And like mm. I, I'll be honest, I guess, like I'm gonna even, get all of my politics from Hassan for eight hours a day sure. every week. Yeah. <laughs> no I, one else. Literally what people do. And like yeah. and even even in the era of video essayists, you can see it with how quickly that people turn on video essayists when like a single thing becomes more nuanced than like just what someone is being told. Right. Like you, you, you know, I, I subscribe to a, a very wide variety of content because I like the content itself. Like I like the format. Grimbeard is probably my favorite, my favorite video game reviewer, but I'm also subscribed to Mandalore and I'm also subscribed to Dungeon Chill and I'm also subscribed to King K and, and all these other things, you know, like I, I have all of these channels. Uh, I finished a game is another one. And they all do different things, right? Whereas, like, I feel like a lot are, are different takes on the same thing. Whereas, like, I feel like a lot of people go like, oh, yeah, I watch Let's Plays. I like this one guy. I watch Cryotic or whatever, you know? And, like, that's just the one. And if he doesn't play it, then no one, they're not going to watch any others. They're not going to go out of their way to find it. So there are mm -hmm. people out there, I'm sure, that only watch Keith. I, there are people out there I know who only watch Keith and don't I'm watch so Colonel or me or <laughs> Andrew, you know, wow. like because it doesn't even matter that it's not the the games that we want to play. Or even if our commentary was exactly the same as Keith's being sub to one person who just picks the games you like or or curates your experience for you is meaningful. 
So a lot of people will say, oh, like YouTube, like it's algorithmically this and that. And, you know, we need to have a diverse set of content creators. But at the end of the day, they, don't, they don't actually back that them. up with their habits. Yeah. And it, and that it, that's what kind of causes it. Like, why you know, are all right video now, essays white dudes? It's because you that's the only ones you subscribe to. They're, all, yeah. they're, they're, they're everywhere. There's so many options. And, and people... <laughs> People have said in, you know, there's a chat going on in live commenting right now about this on Keith's Discord. And people were like, you know, oh, may maybe the reason why longer videos do better is just because YouTube's algorithm makes them go better. And I responded like, what the fuck do you think the algorithm is? The yeah. algorithm responds to how people interact. It doesn't exist in a vacuum. Without any input, there would be no output. Like, the AI is not generating a thought on its own and being like, yes, 30 hour long videos. This will be the next big thing. Yeah, it's only doing is, that. It's informed by your viewing habits. It. It's just that yes. there is a bit of a like AI generated art that's cons itself yes. taking in AI art as its data feedback loop where it's like some of the changes the algorithm makes to viewer habits also affect the algorithm in a, in a loop yes. that it, it doesn't even know about. So it's like, yeah, like so it's, people it, it, it all it's don't... caused by people watching these videos over those other videos. <laughs> exactly. And so like people just like aren't interacting. They'll say they want one thing. They're like, oh, like I want, you know, it's it's the quintessential, you know, video essayist problem of like, why? Why are all of these uh, white guy explains you a thing doing really well? And like, why are all these black creators not getting content? And then people will be like, oh, like. Yeah, we need more black voices in the thing, but then they don't fucking watch the black voices videos. So it just gets algorithmically punished for existing like you need. Yeah. It sucks to say because people are just like, I'm exhausted from living my life in the hellscape that we currently live in. But like y'all need to a little bit have more backbone, too, and like not click off of things the second that you feel friction and and click on things that you think you might not like because only existing in your comfort zone even just for relaxation, sorry to say, hurts other people. Like that's just how it works wow. with all the platforms that we I think, that yeah, we I can, created. You know what I mean? Like, this is the hell we have to live through it. The comfort zone is a is a very important notion here because I I myself I I I watch a lot of um actually I've I've just been watching a lot of uh over loves. Uh, 17 vlogs. hour videos of people scraping the lining off of glass just no no well, well <laughs> yeah, wait, uh, I'm trying to say, even the sound what are even the watching? sound the just moment the of hesitation of, <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, well maybe moment. but uh <laughs> just no that's what, but because it connects to what i was uh, to what i was saying is because even just the sounds of of uh somebody playing overwatch is is familiar enough to me and just something i can leave on my second screen and i'm and i enjoy that they, and every once in a while there's this big play yeah, well, yeah, but that's the thing. Like, it's comfortable, I, but it's not challenging in any way, sort of form. I'm like, if I miss half a, half a game, it's fine. Whatever. I'm not. Yeah, uh, I had an evening but, where I was depressed and w wasn't able to focus on anything and didn't have the like the mood to record something. But also, like, like I didn't feel good enough to record something, but I also couldn't successfully write anything. So I just watched like an hour of cooking with Haru compilations, <laughs> just very tactile and slightly asmre but extremely saturated and beautiful just like japanese cooking that's very yeah. energetic and yeah I've, I've been there i get i understand what people do these days sometimes and i but, think but nutella is sometimes for, food uh i think for for gaming the fact that steam has become such a discoverability on steam is is, is a big is, is very a big problem over the last five years and i think that connects to viewing habits as well because we have fewer people actually paying attention to communities and paying attention to uh press websites to to find what games they want to play because steam doesn't also help that and it's just it, it, it that's why you know i i, I found out recently that um the, the 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 creator of Fallout, uh, Tim Kane, and uh, the, also the creator of Outer Wilds. Oh, sorry, Outer Worlds. Mix it up. Um, his biggest selling game is South Park. South Park, the Stick of Truth. Yeah. And um, and in his words, it's just because it's a Ubisoft game. And I'm wondering what kind of marketing machine behind it 
Uh, I've never played it, so I, I can't really comment on the game, but uh, I, I'm wondering what kind of marketing machine behind it is capable of making it that his best selling game, despite him being the creator or one of the creators, well, his, his biggest name, uh, of Fallout, which is a this huge franchise. And is it, but no, though, that's this this niche RPG thing that's the biggest, that's his biggest seller. Controversy. And, it's not a niche RPG. Controversy. It's it's a it's a it's not niche because it's sold a lot. And it's no, a huge, it's a huge it's not niche because it's one of the biggest media properties yeah. in the world. Yeah, <laughs> South exactly. Park yeah, is yeah, so yeah. popular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, South yeah. Park is really popular too. Yeah, I mean, also, I think that's it. It's, it's also just like the, recognition. Some interesting analytics to look at here that, that I'm spotting, where it's just like. Uh, one of the one of the interesting outcomes of my essay channel taking off the way it did with the video that it did is that I got categorized by YouTube and I did not get categorized as a video essayist. Like what what was interesting mm. to me is that like I exploded but like I did not grow connections with any video essayists. Like I did not like Oh, I made a video about gay people. I'm in BreadTube now. Like, no one. No, that's like literally, there's no overlap whatsoever in audience. Like, when I look at my channels, your audience watches, like, the only person I see that's even vaguely in that, and, it, and I think this is, is because I made a, it, one, it was an anime video, two, it was a furry video, and three, it was a gay video, as opposed to being about things that actually feel like video essay topics and so on. So, like, when I look at channels your audience watches, the only thing I, that really matches up really is like Lily Sampson, Lily, Lily Simpson. Uh, everyone else is mm. a, like it's Beta Ada Delota is in is in the people that my audience watches. Uh, Izzy's, which is not a video essayist, that's like a retrospective channel. Uh, quote, I don't know who Quote even is. It's the person with the red hood, the green hood, and the in the mask and glasses. I these are not. I literally, I literally am not in like the like the category. Like I don't share audiences with video essays. I exclusively share audiences with like fluke husky. <laughs> it's it's just funny because even here, like literally every single person you mentioned, the only person I'm familiar with is, is Beta, and that and I don't watch her content. I know who she is from right. other video essayists mentioning her. Ah. The only the only person I'm familiar with is, that you've Stephanie mentioned watches is, a lot of Izzy is beta because yeah. i know him in person yeah we saw i don't watch his content <laughs> Damn. so it's like it's hard to like lily simpson never heard of you know like audi- all of these other people never heard of going by the order these are listed and assuming it's most relevance i share more audience w- with beta than anyone on the entire youtube <laughs> <laughs> well keith's channel is in my top uh seven no eight top eight yeah um, well one, one of the channels i've shared the most yeah. audience with is my own channel <laughs> it's my own let's play channel <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that does help it's a very it is uh, it's it is funny in its own way that my own let's play channel is the eighth channel i have the most in common with <laughs> like that's how that's how relatively little the audience actually overlaps between my channels is that it's not let's even the same people mm-hmm yeah, no, I did not fucking just sneak straight into the every frame of painting crowd or anything. Like, I literally, do. I I made, I, I exploded as an essayist in the way that I did, because I do have a million views on a video, which is insane. Like, it was my, like, my fourth video. That's not supposed to, that shouldn't happen that way. And that, that and that's very lucky. But it, I'm literally in a different bucket than the type of content I made. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, which is the point we're going forward. It's like, it's going to be very interesting trying to figure out what a video is supposed to be like for that channel because i have to like if i step out of my bucket then the video doesn't exist it just doesn't youtube could just ignore it it's a great platform (laughs) looking looking at my channel it's people say people in my audience watch keith noel playing games nikishi the furry animator and then a guy who does Furry I also have no- Nikishi in here. Furry visual novel dating sim tier lists, and uh, a guy whose first video is a picture of him ahe gowing titled "Who is the hottest werewolf?" Uh, interesting. 
I, I like mine because I look at it and it says not enough eligible audience data to show this report. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so oh. I cannot even tell you who's watching what. I one kind of, the, of think that one, they're just the fifth are... most popular channel in my Visio SAS audience. My SA channel's audience is Coley Does Things, a channel I'm seeing for the first time right now. Uh, they seem to make a video every two or three days that is 20 minutes to an hour and a half long that's just like so the trolls fandom blew up the biggest <laughs> fandoms on ao3 the top ships on tumblr unhinged ao3 tags and it's just like when i you know, when farm. i so if i look I, at i'm, so I'm right, not going to criticize or every... complain about this person i'm just like i don't I, I don't know how they're one of the most related channels to my channel. I don't. Th I don't think this is the content I made. <laughs> oh no. So this is the so this is the problem I find when I look at. So if I go to research and I find, hey, these are the things that people like in your category that you're you know you're making content for. These are the top videos. All of them are lists. All of them. Seventeen new stealth games. Ten clone video games. Ten hardest games to play. Like I I, this isn't even content I make. This is not content related to me. This is not like this is a huge problem when it comes to like a, a genre of video, right? Even when you say let's play, let's play doesn't mean one thing. When I say like I'm, I want to watch a let's play video, that doesn't just necessarily mean I want to watch a guy talk over video games. There's like a yeah. very different amount of content there. So it becomes hard to like, yeah, how do you gauge you know, like what does your audience want? If I search... You know, if, if my audience wants to watch more video game videos, what the fuck does that mean? They want to watch like me play a game and also make a top 10 list of the games that I hate. Like, what do you, what do these people like? Wh what would I say is the 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 combining factor between all those people? Like all of those channels you just listed. What makes you what is what video of yours is uh, falling into uh, the circle in the same way that those other channels are like what is the yeah what is the tying video to all of them and that's like the most i don't know like do, do you build a channel based on that do you just make videos sometimes like that to throw little uh, bits of bait to those people like how do you how do you gain value from that information i guess is what i'm asking like what it what good is that that information for you as a content creator yeah i i don't think it's necessarily as simple as as uh, just looking at that and being like, let's cater to this. Yeah, I think. But like, uh, so, but why is it there? Why? Like, I, I guess that's the question is like, what because is it, it allows you for me? well, the, I don't know why it is there from Google's perspective, but I can uh, I think the, the value that you can get from it is to sort of gauge where um, you're best performing, because yeah. you can still try to do niche things that don't are not optimal for the algorithm. But that's what the this sort of analytics helps with is just sort of being yeah. able to to be like, yeah, I'm making videos about X, but everything that really I, resonates I, with people is just Y. I mean more of like certain certain avenues, right? I can understand the stuff of there's a lot of there's a lot of analytics on YouTube for those who don't know. If you go into analytics page, it's just a fucking yeah, uh, it's a bunch of info. Of inf just a lot of info. A lot of info, though, isn't very helpful for you to craft a more uh, engaged or more viewed YouTube channel. Like one of the most annoying, I remember one of the most annoying trends was people like spamming at you to tell you to subscribe. It's like only 10% of my watchers are subscribed. You need to subscribe. It's <laughs> like, I, I cannot tell you enough how that isn't the av like one that the isn't the way you want to fix that problem but two it's also not a it's not a helpful metric in that way because just because they're not subscribed that's what you want you want a lot of non-subscribers to be watching your content exactly because then yeah. they subscribe later like that's how it fucking works <laughs> you yeah. don't want like the I, thing is I is like the like, pattern over time and because youtube actually does give you like a really strong uh look at things like how many people who like were first time viewers came back to look at your content later and stuff yeah so like in the the scary thing about this is that like people being like remember to smash that like button and hit subscribe that actually works like like statistically scientifically speaking yes, call it, it works I, 
I refuse. I absolutely like. I every, every, actually every, yeah. Refuse. I hate. I hate doing call to actions, but all of pretty much all of them are done because they're actually effective, and people will actually be more likely yeah, to do yeah, the action yeah. if they're you, reminded you of guys, every video. You guys, you guys really like asking need to for have comments. some more self control. Don't listen asking to people. Asking for comments tell you is the one things. that I noticed the most. The moment I stopped doing that at the end of the video is like a drop in like sixty to seventy percent of comments less. Yep. Yeah, and I, comments it, for the and common that algorithm. Like, but I, yeah, that I, seems like I, I make a habit I, of in the essays saying like, "Hey, tell the algorithm this is a good video," and I'll just. I'll forget I even said that, but there will be literally for months comments that comments. are basically saying exactly that. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Algorithm. I can't. I that is something I'm terrible at. This is like that. That is the you get less terrible at avenue. it whenever you put a lot of work into something and you're terrifying of, terrifying nope. of, it, of it flopping. You're like, uh, <laughs> I'm going to put a reminder in this video to please make the video not fail. <laughs> you, you say that. But my biggest problem is I hate it. I fucking hate it, and I if I if I see it yeah, in a video, we're I turn from the, off the, we're video from the old internet. We're like, but so so my problem becomes I can't do it honestly. If I tell you to subscribe, I'm doing it sarcastically. Exactly. Don't fucking subscribe to me. There's like, a whole Dan Olson video that's completely about the ironic detachment of the ritualization of asking for like, comment, subscribe, where you have to increasingly turn it into some kind of gimmick or have some sort of detachment from it like we're better than we're all going through this please say it but i don't think it works though i i see people say things like do all the algorithm things and just limit that's what they say and it's like i think that doesn't work saying stuff like that i don't i don't care if it works i'm just telling you it probably will work for like one or two people out of a a thousand the more explicit your call to action the better it it needs Works. to be stuff. What do you think about this thing? And like, do you need to tailor like half of the video to leave stuff in the in the air so people can <laughs> like, argue in the comments? That's, that's like how, how corrosive like, it gets. It just sounds like something <laughs> I'm going to become like a nuclear arms race with. Like now, my call to action is going to be like a gender reveal party. I'm going to go burn down half of California to get you to subscribe to me. Like mm-hmm. that is the extent don't, that I feel. Don't that give Mr. Kind of Beast ideas. <laughs> It's oh, that oh Mr. Beast, it's come to me. Call me directly. I got some good ideas for subscribers. Oh, no. Trust me. Just don't like, it, but, it's, it's, <laughs> but it, there's a I lot started of, three California of, wildfires just to see who would survive. <laughs> Mr. Beast thumbnail. You know what? I took <laughs> I took inspiration from the from the fucking Oban festival. I wrote subscribe in the mountain with fire. I hope it doesn't get worse, yeah. but it won't if you subscribe. It turns and then out I'll call the it fire turns department. out that the Jewish like, space lasers were real. <laughs> oh, no. Me, I'm the space laser. I've just been here all along. Uh, like, <laughs> like what is like that's but those kind of things are those kind of things are frustrating to me because they are obviously like you said they they work in some regard people don't do them because they're they don't do anything but they're so unappealing that i don't want to do them and if i have to do them i don't want to make content and i i i hate that i hate when i go and look at these analytical data and i see that kind of stuff where i go like okay cool i don't really it doesn't bother me to look and see that most of my viewers aren't subscribed that's fine i don't really think they need to be honestly but knowing that that has a negative impact to my channel is what makes me upset like, yeah i don't yeah i don't really care if you're here if you're like if you want to be here long term i get why you wouldn't i don't subscribe to a lot of channels i watch daily because i don't want them to show up in my fucking feed i don't want them there yeah. i will choose when i come to watch you but like the fact that that makes it so that channel consume may not consume a, cri- a cr- uh, critical video i just want him i just want his voice to be running when i fall asleep yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> moist <laughs> critical. You want yes. to sleep to his voice? Gotcha. Moist, okay. No, moist, moist, moist critical has been my sleep aid for like the last three weeks. This is ever since I ever since I realized that. Well, I don't I don't have a TV or any reasonable. Yeah, it's audio not about so, having a TV. Like, no, I'm, I'm exp- this, 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 uh, this is the beginning better, yeah. of a description. I don't have a TV or any kind of like audio device that's decent for, a, for and like I get uncomfortable with things in or on my ears or wearing stuff. And I tried running my phone for a while, and it's too tinny and irritating to listen to sleep next to. But like I recently discovered that the iPad speakers are actually pretty all right to have just kind of running near you. And I just turn off autoplay so it doesn't fucking loop all night or anything. And I just like fire mm-hmm. up like a 15 minute moist critical video of him. He's just he's always sitting in the same location at the same distance from his from his uh, microphone at the same table with the same even speaking voice. And he's just like 
I don't know, summarizing something from Reddit or whatever the fuck, and then I just pass out in seven minutes. That's, and, and I'm like, so yes. <laughs> that's my Finally. problem. My problem isn't the method. My problem is the content. That's what I'm concerned about. I'm, <laughs> yep, I'm, 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 I'm propping up moist critical. Like, I, yeah, that's my concern. Like it's I, fine. and I, it's not. He takes that pictures I'm, with fur. Uh, it can't be that bad. <laughs> I, 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 there's the funny little like, pictures of him at the clubs taking photos with fur suiters and like, yeah, this is alright. Uh, I'm a person yeah, that cannot fall asleep reasonable. to stuff being around. Yeah, I cannot I, fall asleep really? with the sound oh. of anything. If there's yeah. any sound or any light, I can't fall asleep. I've been, it's, I've been, I've been iterating. Yeah. I've been working on different approaches. Uh, I, I basically, me, if I could, having I it just be loud enough that I can hear it, hear it, but just quiet enough that it's not just like too much, gives my brain like a thing to like, kind of follow. That Instead, gives me sleep paralysis. <laughs> well, I don't get sleep <laughs> paralysis, know. so whoop wee. But it gives my brain like a little thing to follow, and then that makes me not think about all of the things that I'm anxious about all the time, and then I end up passing out. It's been a good ritual for the last few weeks. I, I need listen. I, I needed to I'm adapt. I needed to wake up at eight a.m. for toaster password and for our binge that gave me depression. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. We've been so I, much I, password I, that I became a non-functional person for a few days. I just like shut down. I was just sad <laughs> about everything. I'm glad you learned what it felt like to play Zero Escape. I see, no, zero, we, it, zero, no, no. Well, I think this. I think. I mean, I, password I, is considerably see, worse than zero. Yeah, escape. I'm not I, saying it's not. I, I, I just, I just, I, be, I believe that zero escape was bad for Andrew because of how he talked about it. Because he really basically sure. he quit let's playing after zero escape. Oh yeah. no, I didn't realize that. I'm yeah. sorry, okay. Andrew. But but for me, <laughs> zero escape had infinite, re, infinite enjoy. Like it was infinitely entertaining. I could have. Okay, played more zero, zero, escape zero escape immediately. I was having so I, much fun I, with that playthrough of being just I love the worst. I love watching zero escape content that we made. I fucking hate being in that game. I hate being around it, smelling it, seeing it, <laughs> hearing it, I mean this, it. It's a fuck. Like very sincerely, fucking password would kill you. <laughs> I, I bet it would. I bet it would. You would I, I, die. I don't doubt that. Yeah. I again, I do not <laughs> doubt at all the, that password is like easier or any. I just know that like when I played Zero Escape, I couldn't. I mm -hmm. like the, the like the moment. I I swear the moment that we played virtual like what what was the third one? Fucking note zero, zero time, time dilemma. Zero time. The moment dilemma. they were like there was an old man in the room the whole time. Done. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm fucking over. You can't gaslight me for three fucking games. I'm here. I played it. You can't lie to me. I that saw no old man. No one weird. talked yeah. about an old man. He wasn't there. You can't fucking lie. And Damn. Then, that he's the, the critical twist. moment. He is the most important part of the whole fucking story. Like, fuck. That, you can't lie so about bad. a story element. And Andrew's then... about to get the police call on him in real Just life, wait. in real time during this podcast man, for this voice. I... It, you should finish password with Andrew just so that we he he will take a just vow to of silence save after you it. from it. It, it, it would. Oh, I didn't. Andrew look, would become I didn't, a monk. I'm gonna, He'd achieve I'm gonna say. I didn't think. I didn't think I could hate Nazis more. But the moment that stupid old fuck showed up in Zero Escape, I learned to hate Nazis more than I've ever hated them before. <laughs> fuck that guy. Where did you come from? Wait, How? the old man was a Nazi? Wait, yes, he was, he was teleported to fucking World War II Berlin and became a Nazi. Like, oh, I don't remember. Oh, my God. Fuck no, you. but the, are you kidding the me? Whole, and you what? remember the whole... Zero Time Dilemma better than I do. How, yeah, I don't, why yeah, would I, I not, Keith? Why the fuck would I not? This game <laughs> I is remember it so you don't have to. This is. It's, it's literally, it's literally going to be the thing. Like, I will lose when I'm 80. I will lose all memories. Every memory of my entire life will be fucking sent down a like a drain of dementia. But not fucking zero escape. The story, I will die the story about that the name, twins was just so confident that I forgot it immediately. I it was it just it was so bad. All bro, I remember the, the, is the, the is entire. The, is the more immediate use of the time travel device, but not the lore part of it. I forgot about that immediately. That's insane. That's insane that he's game. like, yeah, I, sorry, I full metal alchemist the movie a bit. <laughs> <laughs> the entire game relies on two people being stuck in a death trap, fucking having children and putting their babies into a time machine. 
<laughs> well, Fuck you. That was so that bad. Was whole game. No, the real, that the is real game. reason that the real reason that you know that password is inspired by uh Zero Escape is that both of them contrived writing rape into their story. Yay. Why oh, did no. he, why? 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 Password is password is a creatively bankrupt story with no ideas so and uh incredibly what? cynical posturing i highly recommend not reading it toaster may i ask why this happen? are there a lot of people are there a lot of fucking people who want you to play that game who say it's so good it is oh yeah that's the best aren't yeah. really the password we're Isn't, currently yeah. we're Isn't currently playing the funny? route that everyone said was the good part so all of our criticisms were, were the, the moot because we actually thing... just need to go play this other route and now we're yeah. playing it and we're like oh no the worst thing about password <laughs> is that people were adamant to us that the route that we were that we're playing now was, was going to absolve bad. all of our problems and it's way better than the one that we played which is really bad and shouldn't be in the game anyway and you could cut it out and it wouldn't cause any problems. So we switched to playing it and it turns out that the irrelevant awful route where nothing happens is literally more well written than the route that everyone is saying is better. <laughs> no. And you know, I'll say this as like the resident doesn't hate Zero Escape as much as everyone else on this podcast. Like, I think there are ideas in Zero Escape. I don't know if yeah. all of them are good, but I I understand how those games came to be in an attempt to make a ludo narrative design that was kind of unique and interesting, especially at the time. My favorite part Password about Zero doesn't Escape even is that, have that things happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a cynical game that yeah. much. Like, the, cynical is not something you can call Zero Escape. If yeah. anything, it's the other way around. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like, too, I, too sincere, yeah. Yeah. Whereas, like, Password is a creatively bankrupt, extraordinarily politically questionable uh extremely just content void game uh that that only exists as far as it does exist because uh gay furries on the internet who want to play dating sims who don't have computers that can run better games have extraordinarily low standards and don't think or use their brains which may or may not even be there uh when they're consuming media so that's how i feel about password that game is a condemnation of uh just people who eat content because it's fandom content uh have higher mm. standards people that's the takeaway from that we should learn better than this hey wow mm. that's exactly how i felt about zero escape password would tired. truly kill you andrew like i i, I, tr I very <laughs> much mean it it would end your life i i don't understand why it's so consumed why do people like they're ha they're they're just there's other things there are other things to, to do why the are you is, doing this stop the, doing this guys the, stop playing the, these games the thing just, with it is that there fuck. isn't for these people like they just think they go Bullshit. like oh there's Bullshit. no there's can... no other good gay furry husbando dating there is sim and there isn't yeah there isn't there just isn't <laughs> there is there's no there there's just no is not a single one of those yeah there's no good ones. There's no password I'm telling, is the best. That's what they think, and I'm not saying password. But is, is it the best. true? Is it I, true? Password is not the best. No, but looking at the genre as a whole, as someone who is a bit of a subject matter expert in this field, I can tell you, you could toss out pretty much the whole genre, and the 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 entire oeuvre of art would not be particularly affected because wow. there are like five good visual novels total in the entire history of the medium and none of them are gay furry visual novels no so it is what it is i mean that's then, the bottom you know of what? the barrel that we're scraping that's what i'm saying then i i recommend maybe just not I Just agree. Wait it That's out. my takeaway. That's my takeaway. <laughs> Just wait it out. <laughs> Keith Keith wants to do more furry furry visual novel let's plays, and the people on the channel more? want it. Yeah, yeah. More? Pe people on the channel want it, and it's fandom, and we're participating with our community. But let me tell you, it's hard to get through some of these. There but there are some like okay ones that are passable that I don't hate that I think well, are pretty okay. And the hope with that they'd be more consistently like 
you know, just kind of inoffensive and fun and yeah, and, and they go and they do their and thing. That's and that's fine. Like, that's what that they would did. That would be great. And instead of being this, where you're like, oh, fuck, we're trapped in it forever but, and it's not doing yeah. anything. All I'm saying is there is no furry umineko, straight yeah. or gay or otherwise. All I'm like, saying you're not going to get is literature. You're scary here. red. <laughs> Uh, all I'm saying Red is... Red is scared because we're playing his game next. And you're like... I'm sure Glory oh, Hounds will be dead. fun. <laughs> I'm sure art is dead, but I also like comic books. So <laughs> I'm fine with that. Red should just write about like, cowboys. As long as it's not Buster bad. likes cowboys. I do like cowboys. As long as it's so not Mandy. bad, it will be fine. Try... Like, that's what we're aiming for, though. That's the point I'm making, is that, like... As a whole, the visual novel medium is aiming for not bad. And that's a success for them if they reach not bad. And especially in the gay furry visual novel space, not bad is a stunning achievement, which is just... And Arches is the most not bad of them all. It is. It is or the most not depart. bad of them all. They're, they're, uh, and they're before good. Part. They're neat. But... People I, should play other things. That's really what it boils down that to. That is an and actual should... struggle. Like, I got a retro spring question. I don't want to dump on this person too bad if they're watching this and the other ones <laughs> and all that. But, like, they were like, media needs more complex villains like Leo from Echo. And I'm like, oh. What? Oh. <laughs> It's Leo's like one not it's, a villain, it's, he's just a pathetic yeah, man. One, it's just really <laughs> dubious to call wow. of all people in Echo Leo a villain. Because there's monsters and uh, horrible, horrible murderers in that thing. Both literal monsters and figurative monsters throughout that story. <laughs> and Leo is just a sad, toxic boyfriend who in one particular end can <laughs> fall to like the silent hillification of the setting and do a murder. But he's just not a villain. He's but, an antagonistic presence, but not I, but a like, villain. Yeah, I like, but, but all I could read the question <laughs> as was like, it, feel, it feels like when somebody just consumes like certain kinds of anime and star wars and marvel movies and that's like fiction for them and so when they come to when they come to furry visual novels they encounter something like echo and yes there is a lot of depth at echo like i like to the point where i'm i want to yeah. write about it and stuff but also like some of the stuff that they think is good about echo they think is unique to echo and i'm like no that's that's the bare minimum for most fiction. Yeah, that's not, yeah, yeah. You're consuming stuff Read that doesn't book. try, <laughs> and I'm like, oh no! Look, and it's like, it's not about like gatekeeping or not about like sh shaming people. I'm just saying, like, generally speaking, if you if you liked Echo, and you wish more art was like that, it is. Yeah, and yep. it's there. It's it's freely accessible and it's everywhere. You just need to stop, and this kind of feeds back into the original youtube discussion about the algorithm condensing all of everything into much narrower buckets and guiding people's uh taste essentially is like you everybody has a a more interesting personality and more diverse taste than what is being served to them and so a lot of people are just settling for the thing in front of them instead of finding the thing they actually like yeah yep it's like stop I'm you don't need to you don't need to like settle for fucking doctor strange 2 and complain about it for six months you could actually just go find the thing that is what you wanted instead of hoping marvel makes it yeah i mean i think i think a big thing too is just like i don't know i made the joke a while ago of like furries read umberto echoes in the name of the rose uh and do not spontaneously combust challenge impossible and it's just <laughs> like it's like this idea of like there's really great content. People out there will be like, oh, I love your Pentiment playthrough. I wish there was more good historical fiction that was rooted in this. I really wish it was like there was cool, good historical fiction murder mysteries. And I'm like, you realize Pentiment is basically an adaptation of a book yeah. that already exists, right? Like, it, It's like you, when somebody wish says, can... like, I wish there was something more like in this genre when they watch a Tarantino movie and you're like, yeah, he's never <laughs> making anything up. He's literally just riffing on an existing thing. That's the whole point. That's all he does. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. It's just, it's people talking about and, and having a really limited view of media and like even, even media that is like, like mainstream and stuff. Like people have a very limited view of it. Like, like it's, it's always really fascinating to me using this as an example when people are like, all Marvel movies look the same. They're all just made by a studio. 
And it's like actually one of the big reasons why the most recent Marvel movies have been failing is because they gave auteur directors too much creative control. And every single one of those movies lacks a distinct, you know, uniform style because every single filmmaker just made their own movie that was uniquely bad for the reasons that uh, are completely attributable to just them. So even when people are talking like shitting on mainstream stuff that they think is like indicative of a trend, it's like, oh, you didn't actually look at this. You don't know what you're talking about because fucking The Eternals is not bad for the same reasons that like Doctor Strange 2 had problems. They don't even look like they're made by the same company. They are drastically different looking films, uh, even outside of just aesthetics, like on a basic filmmaking perspective. And so it's like it's really interesting to see people who don't have a very wide range of media or a, a very deep grasp of uh, of nuance in media be like password is the best mystery I've ever read. And it's like, Oh, uh-huh. you just have never read another mystery. You've read, you played zero escape yep. and password. And this is the one that you have recency bias. Oh for. my I got God. It. Okay. That I is got not it. even, you can't, you cannot take. <laughs> well, let's be like realistic. Seriously. They also played Duncan. No, Wampa. no, no. <laughs> yeah. They also played. Oh Duncan my God. Wampa. Wow. Uh, that's Jesus. their, like that's their, uh, con- that's, we're talking about an audience whose entire exposure to the genre is Danganronpa and Zero Escape and then a furry visual novel that they think is better than those yeah. ones. And that's the reason. Like, I feel like you it's like- you could <laughs> devastate that person instantly. Like you could shatter their entire reality if that, if that is their peak, the pinnacle for I, them are those three games. You could yeah. just shatter them. I mean, I've, I've said it before. I've said it on the, on the Let's Play, but like you are what you eat, right? Is like just like that Damn. mantra of like <laughs> if... I, one of the reasons why I think Password is so bad is because I can tell that it was created from a place that was primarily motivated by a steady diet of like anime and visual novels and Japanese games. And like, like mm. it's made in that mode in such a way that it's like, oh, you're trying to do something that's more serious sci fi, but you don't have the base of knowledge needed and the 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 breadth of experience needed in that genre to speak in that mode right and like so we're we're in this weird content era and this is especially true of furry visual novels where it's like we are reading content written by people who want to make content but their only base of media is like i read a bunch of manga and and watch some anime and read 17 visual novels. This is the entirety of my reading experience in the past 20 years. And it's like, okay, manga can be ma- manga can be amazing. <laughs> anime can be great. There are some good visual novels. But if that is your only exposure to this sort of thing, you don't have a wider base of influence, you're going to slowly and slowly degrade that original thing that you're like trying to call attention to. And that's how you get like erosion and like linguistic drift in styling. And like, that's how we get different movements of art that just are kind of derivative and hacky compared to like synthesizing something new out of, you know, a wider array of base ingredients. If you're constantly just inbreeding anime and manga and visual novels <laughs> to make another visual novel, I'm sorry to say the the offspring of your creation is going to be kind of just a worse version of those things you first put into it. So that's kind of how I feel about that. Can't believe that anime is inbreeding now. It has been it ever o- since the light novel been. boom, <laughs> especially it's bad. Light novels are just bad. I've read so many of them. They're awful. How could you say that when there are such classics as... <laughs> like, <laughs> I, and then light, the sentence light, just ends. <laughs> light novels peaked in like 2006 with Haruhi, and they just went downhill from there. There's nothing else to get out of that. I don't know shit about, about light novels. They're uh, young adult mess. fiction, but for Japanese yeah. children. Like the only light novel I think I can name is All You Need Is Kill. That's not a light novel. That's just a novel. Yeah. Oh, I thought so. it was a light novel that got tra- that got adapted into a manga. Nope. That got nope. Adapted that's into a straight a, up a Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> no, 
All you need is kill is a straight up book. Uh, uh, it, it's a, it's so you, we were talking I about think, like Japanese animorphs. Yeah, like just yeah. the tiniest yeah. little ghost written fifty page goosebumps books. I think all you need is kill might be might be advertised as a light novel now, but. I would say at the time, I mean, it's the longest light novel I've ever read. If it is considered a light novel, it's like 500 pages long. Uh, I never so, I haven't read the original. What? If it translated. I, I have the adapted by the artist of Death Note manga. Yeah. Isn't like and, the entire appeal of a light novel that you can carry it on like in your purse really easily? Like, yeah, it, yeah. It's like a it's like one of those kind of novels you would buy in at like a, a Rayleigh's with a really hunky man on the front. Like that's I essentially have, I have a copy of it somewhere at my house. Aren't, but aren't like, wait, aren't romance novels chunky? No, not, not really. like that. Are they no. skinny? They're they they just look big, but they're not long. You'll be done they're, with them in like a weekend, or not even a weekend. You'll be done with them in like an afternoon. <laughs> big font sizes and stuff. The thing the yeah. thing with light novels is that light novels are like Tonka Bond sized books that have illustrations in them. So I, I mean, I guess technically all you need is Kill has illustrations. So maybe that's why it's are it's considered a light novel. But I would not describe it as a light. I would just say that's a that's just a sci fi novel. <laughs> it's like it's written by a a sci fi novel writer and has uh and is much longer than uh than most normal light novels but but still long long story short. anyway i hope you enjoyed algorithm talk books. where we talk about art and how it's condensed by math and how all of us have to change what we do in order to appeal a god that no one prays to uh see you in my next video essay where i it titled i pounded in the butt by my own video essay where i read all 372 <laughs> chuck tingle novels and then i go mentally insane on camera because that's the trend now Top read 10. a book <laughs> motherfuckers i'm gonna read 300 mm. of them why